Uh, very good morning to all. Uh, I, it's a great pleasure to welcome uh, Honorable Founder President, uh, our uh, respected uh, Chancellor, uh, Dr. Atul Chauhanji, uh, respected Chancellor Asim Chauhanji, Amol Chauhanji, uh, Dr. Silva Murthy, Dr. Minakshi Munshi, and all our academic leadership who is here actually, uh, very eager to listen to Dr. Minakshi Munshi. Now, we all know that uh, uh, writing grant is very important, but it was uh, my experience at SCRB and other programs also in DST that 50% uh, of the projects are really uh, rejected because they don't know how to project themselves. So that uh, writing itself is very important, how to actually sell your dream, your dream pro proposal, that is very important. So uh, I'm very uh, thankful to Dr. Minakshi Munshi actually, who agreed to join us actually, for this important webinar. And you can see the importance that uh, our founder president himself is there, actually, our chancellor, Tulji is there, actually, and our uh, all uh, stalwarts, I think you might have known from your JNU days. Yes. They are, they are here. And uh, about 500 people registered till yesterday. I am sure more will be joining here. Uh, now I'll hand over to Dr. Silva Murtiji for his opening remarks. And after that introduction, and then we will start. Sure. Uh, with Dr. Minakshi Munshi. Thank you, Dr. Rajiv Sharma ji. And I welcome each and every one of you who have joined us today on this very pleasant sunny morning. And all the viewers, I welcome you. And our Honorable Founder President, Dr. Ashok Chauhanji, Dr. Atur Chauhan, Chancellor and President of our Foundation, and all the very distinguished members of Amiti family. And we now have a very important speaker today, Dr. Meenakshi Munshi whom I have known for decades, and a very brilliant scientist, a great science administrator, and who has made a mark in India by through her contribution in the Department of Biotechnology and the every activity which DBT is carrying out today, her signature is there. Whether it's a big program or BIRAC program, or it is Ramalinga Swami Fellows, so you name any program, if uh, DBT has achieved so much today, her signature is there in all those schemes, programs, which she has executed so meticulously. And we are very fortunate to have her today with us to share some of her experience that how do we write a quality project? Because ultimately India is, as founder president keeps telling that India is emerging as a knowledge superpower. So for this research is the fulcrum is the common denominator uh, and creativity, innovation are the driving force. So if it is so, research projects become very important because it is project means it is streamlined, it's focused. So that is why project quality, uh, writing quality projects, successful projects is very important. So all of you who have joined us today, you are going to be immensely benefited by her uh, deliber deliberations in the next about 45 minutes, then we have kept enough time for discussion. So don't just uh, hurry up and you whatever question, doubts, clarification you want to ask, we will stay back. Even if it is extends beyond 12.30, we will stay and listen to all of you. Today, India has created the right ecosystem. If you look at uh, India, we have a uh, thousand universities and 60% is uh, private sector and we have 45,000 colleges. So uh, India is emerging as the, as the knowledge superpower, knowledge creator. And then we also have created human resource, infrastructure, the right ecosystem. And if, I mean, uh, if India is today third in the publication and nature index uh, five, and if you are patent number 10, Amiti has contributed to all this merit of India 25,000 publications have come out from the portals of Amity. And the 10,000, uh, our patents is more than 1,430 patents have come out from here. And the uh, 15 technologies have gone. So what I want to say is Amity is contributing to whatever India is today in science and technology in a big way. And in this uh, scenario, 21st century belongs to life sciences in which biotechnology is going to play a very important role, which she is spearheading. Meenakshi is spearheading many schemes in DBT because 21st century belongs to biotechnology as one of the major core discipline. If you look at biotechnology, there will be convergence in nanotechnology, information technology. So DBT role has increased in this 21st century 
and COVID-19 has brought a refocus on the DBT. So that is why her presence here today is very important. About MET, we have more than 350 ongoing projects. And then we have, uh, we have uh, uh, publications, as I said, 25,000 publications. So not only we get the projects, we manage them well. Meenakshi ji, whatever the, the, the help we report, uh, receive from all of you from various ministries, we manage the sanctioned projects so meticulously in terms of meeting the objectives and also uh, ultimately looking at the outcome. And Dr. Uh, Chancellor Dr. Atul Chauhan has created that if we work together, we can achieve anything. Absolutely. So that is why we work together, synergy, bringing synergy through MOUs with institutions in India and abroad. So with all this, now Amiti is emerging as a cradle of innovation. So your help, your support, and uh, Ramalinga Swami fellows, uh, we, have, we have got more than 35 Ramalinga Swami fellows, Ramalinga fellows, inspired faculty. They're all so happy and uh, uh, producing a lot of vibrant uh, environment and also contributing immensely. We have publications in Lancet. <laughs> Last year, we have four Lancet publications and two nature publications, uh, nature medicine, the nature yesterday, I received a nature publication from Amit University of Rajasthan. So this quality of publication cell we publish, then Royal Society of Chemistry, Royal Society of Biology, our people are fellows, 2% of our scientists are there. Among the 2%, there are 15 scientists from Amiti group, which is there. So this is Amiti today. So that is why I, I want to compliment right from the founder, president, chancellor, and all the drive engines here, you see in the panel, and all of you faculties, fellows, research scholars, you are contributing to this glory of Amiti. So I want to express on behalf of chancellor, Dr. Atul Chauhan, on behalf of Founder President, our gratitudes to all of you who are bringing this glory. And we are here today to listen to Dr. Meenakshi Munshi, a great scientist, a great science administrator. And uh, we are going to be immensely benefited. She's going to tell us how do we write a successful quality projects, which is a critical point to get a project sanctioned. The quality is important. So with that, I welcome each and every one of you here. And I'm sure if you are going to have an intellectually enriching experience, listen to her deliberations very, very precisely, very, very carefully, so that you will learn what are the opportunities available, how do we harness it, how do we write a quality projects and be successful, not only in national projects, but international projects, bilateral, multilateral projects, which she is spearheading. So thank you very much. And now over to you, Dr. Rajiv Sharma ji. And thanks, thanks for bringing. I want to compliment Dr. Rajiv Sharma. And he's a pillar for research and innovation in, in Amiti Group. And thank you so much for bringing such a great uh, uh, the expert here today, Dr. Meenakshi Munshi, for the deliberation. Uh, thank, thank you, sir. Uh, uh, now, of course, Dr. Meenakshi Munshi, as she was saying, almost everybody knows her, rightly, I think, in Amity University. Uh, but I'll request again Dr. B.C. Das, who, who also is a very well, well known uh, uh, in his own research field, actually. So I'll request him to kindly introduce Dr. Minakshi Munshi. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sarma. And uh, very good morning to one and all, each and everybody who is attending this important webinars. And at the outset, um, I, on behalf of uh, the Amity University and my own behalf, welcome once again our two days uh, by the most distinguished speaker, Dr. Minakshi Munsi, uh, who is, uh, uh, is now at present heading as the Scientist G and um, uh, advisor of the DBT at Government of the Department of Biotechnology, Government of India, where what everybody knows. I, also, the, uh, welcome our uh, welcome our uh, honourable founder president, sir, who is a prime source of our inspiration for science and innovation at Amity University, and he with his uh, we, we all uh, the, the Amity University has transformed. DJ, he wants to transform, and as he. Not we, as Dr. Sarvamurti has mentioned, that we have already more than 35 fellows are here, and Ramalingo Sanum fellows are almost 30. 
and he wants to have more than 500 in five years time. So that you can imagine that he wants to in transform MIT is a hub of science and innovation for the yeah, the science and innovation hub, and that's for the uh, the the benefit of the society and the nation building. Yeah. And I welcome uh, our honourable founder president, sir, Dr. Ashok Chauhan, and honourable president RBEF and Chancellor of AUEP, Dr. Atul Chauhanji, and honourable additional president uh, RBEF and Chancellor UR, AUR and AUH. Dr. Asim Chohanji and also Mr. Rabda Amul Chohanji, who all have kindly agreed to grace this occasion. So you can imagine the importance of this um, in the seminar. I welcome all the distinguished uh, the panelists, including Dr. Selvamurti, who is the president of ASTIF, we all know, and Dr. Rajiv Sarmaji, DG Foundation of Science, Technology, and Innovation Alliance, and our family of MIT universe, all including the vice chancellor, pro-vice chancellor, and advisors, deans, HOIs, and faculty, most importantly faculty, that this talk is most important faculty and research students and other um, uh, the students. I have great pleasure now in introducing our today's honorable speaker, Dr. Minakshi Munshi ji, who is at present, as I told already, as a scientist G and the uh, advisor to BT. But the most important is that she has been famous among the Indian scientific community in India and abroad because she has the driving the, she has been, she has spearheaded this program, one of the program, and main driving force behind the success of the Ravalingo Sami Fellowship, uh, re entry fellowships. And um, that has, this program has really made the DPT famous. There are many other programs, but this program has made everywhere. Also DST is involved for the Ramanijam and uh, Inspire Faculty program. But Ramalinga uh, Sami Fellowship is uh, really very famous. And um, uh, either, either, either India and abroad, because all the people are coming from abroad. And she is an excellent and amiable, most importantly, she is an excellent, amiable uh, person um, for his excellent scientific. He is also an excellent scientist who has um, uh, uh, contributed immensely in our amity's growth also and for the uh, science and innovation, science technology innovation program by providing or approving the placement of several uh, more than 30 uh, Ramalingo Sami fellows. And I am happy that I am one of the uh, main uh, um, the major gainer because my institute of uh, molecular medicine and stem cell research have almost nine. Uh, uh, they are one or two has left, but that almost ten uh, Ramalingo Sami fellows I got, and at this moment there are uh, eight are uh, at this moment working in my department, and everybody knows how. And uh, we are extremely happy. They have been doing excellent. Um, excellent in these and their field and um, uh, in their individual fields. So they are mostly on the cancer and other field and stem cell research. As you know, to briefly tell about, everybody knows about her throughout the country and abroad and in our um, um, in our capacity as the advisor and the main um, driving force for the Ravalinga Swami Fellow. She did her um, uh, the, the, the graduation and post-graduation from Kashmir University in Plant Sciences mm -hmm. and carried out her PhD work in uh, Bhava Atomic Research Center, Trombe and uh, Bombay. And he has, uh, she has um, done postgraduate, also done postgraduate uh, in journalism and mass communication for the, uh, the IGNO that, um, in uh, New Delhi, the Indira Gandhi National Open University. And uh, subsequently, she joined um, the, the Delhi University Botany Department, the North Campus. I am, I, I think North Campus he joined, as far as I understand, and, um, and and I was in the North Campus later on. That time she moved from there. So uh, as a postdoctoral fellow in that department, and then from there she moved to as a scientist to Jawaharlal Nehru University, and I am sure that uh, she was associated with Professor Sopori sometime, who is a renowned. Um, 
plant scientist and um, and also the vice chancellor or former vice chancellor of JNU. And then from where and she was also working on science. He's a basically a scientist, very uh, with scientific temper. And she was um, the, working on the plant sciences because she her field is plant sciences, plant molecular biology, and signaling. From there, she joined DBT. From where she has uh, transformed into a different category of the scientific administration. And um, and we lost a scientist to the administration, but she is certainly a very helpful person and very, very, very amiable and easily can be contacted and can be talked with her. So, uh, and management, scientific administration and management in the department of biotechnology. And I know we all know that he was heading the human resource development program, social development, and in the, the infrastructure development programs several programs in the DVD and uh, also heads the communication divisions. And um, besides, she has been a part of many policy uh, development programs uh, of the uh, DVD. And that's very great because being scientist is just our contribution will be immense. And she has been the driving force, as I already told, for the RLS fellowships, re-entry fellowships. And, um, uh, and she, it also deals with the other programs of the biofuels, bioenergy, and plant biotechnology, of course. But she is, as I told, she is a scientist, and she had a Fulbright Fellowship for um, one year at California. And um, then she also awarded with the young scientist from the BBS and Allahabad. And uh, she has also published several as a being scientist. She has a lot of publications in National International to her credit, and she has also um, um, articles, most importantly, the popular articles, both print and um, the electronic media. And she has also uh, written a book, a book, biotechnology named as biotechnology applications and careers. That's very important for the uh, our young generation and young faculty and uh, the PhD students. And um, she has, as usual for this responsibility, she has traveled widely from the India and abroad. So with these few words of the brief introduction, I now invite Professor Dr. Munsi to deliver her talk, which is very important. We have been striving very much as a Dr. Selva Murthy and myself as a URC chairperson, we are trying to drive the force that the, how to write a good research projects. We had some seminars, but you being in the help of the matter, your um, way of the contributions and you are uh, the uh, your talk will be most important that you are in the funding agency and they are so your input will be and your way of looking at things and your input will be extremely important for our all the faculty and um, young generation young scientists so writing good research grant proposal which is an important and credible um, aspects for many young scientists are for their building of their career. So thank you so much. I once again um, welcome you. Thank, and uh, Thank you, Dr. Das. Yes. Uh, maybe now request Honorable Founder President who has attached so much significance to this. He wanted everyone who is in science and technology should attend this webinar and get benefited. He himself personally saw that, you know, more, greater, now you see five, more than 515 people but more, more are listening from the, the other YouTube and other media as well. So this is a great, more than thousands of people are watching you. And now uh, it's because of the founder president, whatever science and technology today with the support from chancellor, today we, are, we have a strong science and technology as well as research and innovation in Amity. So we want to listen from you, sir, initially a few opening remarks, and then we can request Dr. Meenakshi. <clears throat> I would say that this is the most important, not one of the most important webinar or lecture or seminar we are holding. You can see the importance of it. Yesterday, I took on a conference line, Dr. Shubha Murthy, Dr. Rajiv Sharma, and Mr. Kochar and Mr. Senthil, all four on the line. I told Mr. Kochar is sending always a circular to all vice chancellors, all universities, but I want to ensure that this information reaches to each and every person 
who is involved in science, technology, innovation. And uh, Pocher and Santil was given responsibility. And the information was sent to 2,500 people of my different university. Anybody and everybody who has to do something with science and innovation. This shows what importance I have given to this webinar. Secondly, I, ha I had heard a lot about Minakshi Ji, but her real importance came to my eyes when about three years back, Professor Agni came to me, sir, you have kindly approved my journey to USA to attend SCI ROI program. Can it be possible that my flight is booked in the same flight in which Minakshi Ji is going? I told yes, within a second, I knew that how important she is for Ragni and whole group because Ragni knows everything about us. So they went there and uh, Dr. Rajiv Sharma has been going from DST. That was his last visit there, combined hybrid visit uh, DST and, and also MET. So that is, and secondly, when the lectures were going on online, Silvamurti and other stalwarts, also Vinakshi ji gave a lecture. I heard every word. And in, in the way she deliberated the importance of science, technology, and innovation in the country. After the lectures, the participants were asked to go to the room of any speaker. Mm -hmm. And people thronged on her room. So many people went to her room so that uh, she can address. The second throng was Dr. Silva Murthy's room. Also a large number of scientists. And the outcome is, I'm telling it, what is it, why it is important today, this lecture. The outcome is 55 top scientists, postdoc applied for, for, for MIT. And we interviewed 44 of them. And 48 hours, interviews were correct, connected and I was every second, every minute, 48 hours learning our these brilliant postdocs. Uh, Dr. B.C. Das has told 500, it should not be misunderstood with 500 uh, fellows, 500 4 oh, yeah. bright, brilliant uh, uh, brains, uh, uh, bringing bright, brilliant brains from overseas, America, Germany, UK, all developing and developed countries. So 500 is the number with, within five years, I have to bring 500 and I have never said anything in life which, which, uh, which is not fulfilled. I'm not a person of DBT so that everybody respect me because I'm a DBT man or DST or ICR, ICMR, but people, they love me and like me because what we MIT has done together with you so with these words, uh, and secondly, uh, I told to Silma Murthy ji yesterday and Rajiv Sharma ji, generally I give a lot of value that all seminars, webinars are punctually finished. But in this case, Kothari ji, in this case, the exception is no end. People can ask questions, interact, uh, interact as long as you want. I will be sitting up to the last minute. So no end today, no 12.30, ask your questions, so this is, and then I'll come at the end again. Minakshi right. Jihati is welcome. You Thank are you in so the family of Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for the president. And I would also request our charismatic, dynamic chancellor and the president of RBF, who has given so much importance to research and innovation in all campuses. For example, in Amity Dubai, space science and technology, we have built a big facility over there and he has started a global research network and novel viruses. So such kind of new, new initiatives with this young dynamic leader, Dr. Atul Chawanji, Amiti is blessed to have such great leaders in Amiti. So may, may we have your comments? Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Dr. Selvamurthy. And uh, let me congratulate uh, Dr. Rajiv Sharma for organizing uh, this great webinar uh, today uh, to all the young scientists of Amity. I can see so many of you from across the country, uh, from all our campuses online, uh, wanting to listen to Dr. Minakshi. You have a great responsibility being part 
of the Amity family. You are part of a great vision and mission of Dr. Chauhan to do something transformational in the field of education, in the field of science and technology. And the commitment of the leadership at Amity is to really give you the best resources so that you are able to work as efficiently and to the best of your potential possible. And uh, this webinar today by Dr. Minakshi, who you have all known and heard to be such a stalwart, uh, such a great achiever in the field of, of science will really go a long way in, in helping all of you uh, to further get grants. I think for any scientist to develop uh, in their profession, it is important uh, to go and get grants, develop your labs, develop the projects that you're doing, do the research uh, output and outcome. And as Dr. Rajiv Sharma said, one of the most important things when you're getting a grant is how to translate what you are doing onto paper so that the, the, the scientists who are going to read your proposal understand exactly what you want to convey. I think it is very important. And Dr. Minakshi, uh, I thank you on behalf of everyone. As, as founder said, uh, we feel you are part of the Amity family and today's lecture will have a tremendous, tremendous impact. So thank you so much for being there. Thank you. Uh, should I start? Thank you, Dr. Turji. And now Minakshi, it's all yours. Now yes, please go thank, ahead. Thank you They're so much. I'm. I am really overwhelmed uh, with all the words. I hope you. I come up to the expectation of all my seniors, my teachers. Some of them are good teachers, some are good friends, some are juniors. Uh, to one and all, my great, uh, gratitude to all of you for inviting me uh, to this uh, seminar. In fact, uh, Rajiji told me, I'll just share my uh, slides. Uh, is that okay? Uh, am, uh, is my uh, presentation visible? Yes, me, Dr. Minakshi, can you make it in slideshow? Yeah, yeah, I'm doing that. I'm doing this. Sir. Great. Is that okay? Yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah good morning. Uh, in fact, uh, when Dr. Raji Sharmaji uh, said that, uh, Minakshi, why don't you give a seminar on what are the various funding schemes available in DBT? Then I realized, I said, sure, I will. But then I thought it will be appropriate all the funding agency, uh, I mean, the funding opportunities of what are existing in DBT and in BIREC are available on the DBT website. So I thought, uh, why don't we talk about how to write a good research proposal? Because many times uh, it is the proposal uh, which uh, speaks for itself. So that is how I came today uh, with this, that how to write a good proposal. I'll discuss about uh, the funding uh, pattern and and how what are the various uh, schemes involved first of all when uh, you talk about and you have an idea as a research idea the first thing is you need to have an idea or a concept and subsequently this idea needs to be developed and this idea needs to be developed uh, you need to have a strategy and once you have framed your strategy in mind, you need a research proposal. And once a so-called research proposal is ready, you have framed it, then the next question comes, where to apply? So because in India, every funding uh, agency has a different uh, set of uh, rules or regulations. So that is very important that we need to look at each funding agency's uh, guidelines, then develop a uh, research proposal. And it goes through a research process. And once uh, so-called uh, this research proposal has been accepted by a particular funding agency, then you need to see how you do well, you perform in this as per the defined mm -hmm. objectives. Then you need to uh, have the outcome of the proposal which is in the form of patents and publications, processes, products, and which ultimately leads to the impact which your project proposal would make. So that really completes a research cycle. So I thought I'll share some thoughts on what are the various aspects of this so-called research cycle. So your research cycle primarily grows 
ideas go through this cycle and which is a normal cycle uh, and now does having any an idea alone help in getting funds that is important the primarily the question is only idea uh, leads to a research proposal getting funds is no so what should a researcher know in order to get funding for his particular idea so it is very important at the beginning that he or she is well versed with the current funding r and d scenario of the country and what are the r and d opportunities available with various funding agencies and then comes the grant writing and which is most important is obtaining funds which is the important component of the so before i really dwell into all this i thought uh, i'll share a couple of slides with the august gathering here that what are the current r and d funding scenarios of the country so if we uh, look at you all many of you have these research uh, funding from different government agencies uh, most of as you are aware most of the funding for the r and d comes primarily from the government sector and over these years there has been a consistent increase in the gross expenditure on r and d over the years and which is very encouraging and if you uh, you all know that in india the public expenditure on r and d has been 0.6 to 0.7% of the gdp because the problem here is unlike in overseas you all know here the private sector is not dominant in contributing towards the r and d innovation ecosystem so we need uh, more involvement of the private sector as well as also from the state government and is needed so our broad goals of r and d uh, for the country are to continue to strive for sustainable development uh, effectively need to tackle the climate catastrophic goals there has to be a focus on health and well being of the people and the most important thing is if we have to sustain we need to conserve our biodiversity now looking at the national r and d expenditure uh, by sector wise if you look at this whole grid the most of the funding comes from the central government and then followed by private sector there's a very minuscule uh, funding component which comes from the state sector or public sector industry or higher education so this needs to change it has been showing positive trends but it's not that much what is expected currently now as we talk about the positive trends of indian r and d ecosystem yes as dr uh, selvamurthy also mentioned india is globally at the third position on the number of publications as per the nsf database third in the number of phd's being produced in science and engineering and the number of researchers per million population has doubled over the years which is a very healthy sign even as per the wipo report india is ranked uh at ninth position in terms of uh, uh, resident patent filing activities in the world so which is very encouraging for the research uh, r and d uh, scientists now uh, this graph gives you an idea about the positive trends of indian r and d if you uh, look at these are the different uh, databases like scopus sci and nsf which shows there has been a steady state increase in the publications uh, over the over these years in the countries same uh, this also gives you the same uh, uh, trend increasing trend in the number of publications these are the different databases which are existing and we just uh, it's a comparison of uh, the these databases which are available so the next question comes how does the system work for r and d the first thing you all know the investment has been primarily by the government through funding agencies and this is where the funding agency comes it is as a mediator or a facilitator where our role is there so we what we do we support academia industry and state governments and r and d is done by each sector leading to the outcomes and outputs and outcomes and eventually it leads to the r and d development of the country as a whole before i go into the details of uh, this so i thought i'll share with you the organizational structure so the ministry of science and technology has three different uh, departments under its uh, umbrella department of science and technology where the focus is primarily on all basic 
sciences, including mathematics, engineering, and other related sciences. We have the Department of Biotechnology is focusing on biotechnology, the product and process development, and Department of uh, Scientific and Industrial Research, which also encompasses uh, Council for Scientific and Industrial Research, that is CSIR, with the focus is on technology and industrial development. Now, since I would be focusing only on the grant writing, now it's very important if I have an idea, I need to nurture this idea and I want to see the fruits of this idea into a product or a process. So how to go about it is that I need to have funds. Nothing is uh, can be done without having the appropriate amount of uh, funding available. So I will share next few slides on grant writing. So it's very important to know the so-called what is a proposal? The moment you say, oh, I have an idea, oh, I need funding, then the next step is, oh, you need to write a research proposal. So what is a research proposal exactly? Uh, if we may have a, to define it, the proposal is a detailed uh, plan or a blueprint of the intended study, which there, it's a, has been, there is a definition, which has been said that a research proposal is a document proposing a research project generally in the sciences or in the academia and generally constitutes a request for sponsorship of that research, which is fairly a, a good uh, representation of a research proposal. So in the simple words, it is an outline of an intended work, which we want to submit to any agency for funding. So now comes, okay, now I have an idea so I need to go to the next step. So what is that next step? Well, for some, you know, writing a grant is very easy. It's a cakewalk. For some, they find it, they can write, yes, but with some difficulty. But for people like me, they will sometimes they feel, oh, it's extremely tough to write a research proposal. But believe me, as you move, as you understand the whole ecosystem, I'm sure you will not find it that difficult to write a research proposal. So how do we get to start a research proposal which is worth funding? So uh, it's very important, you know, to we need to do some preliminary exercise at our end. You know, like many of that many times, many of you would have called me, Manakshi, there is a call for uh, X, pro, uh, X program or Y program. Can you tell us something about how to go about it? So that, you know, it becomes easy for you to understand the ecosystem and so the first thing is you may uh, pick up a phone and call the program officer. Well, uh, there is a particular advertisement has come, come and I'm interested in a particular scheme. So I would like to understand this. I'm sure most of the program officers are amenable bearing few, which is uh, everywhere the situation. Some of them may not respond to your calls, but by and large, most of them would do it. So you can talk to the person concerned and ask, uh, seek his general uh, guidance as how to go about it. Uh, he may give, he or she may give you the broader contours of the, uh, you know, the program and how to apply. And then uh, you go back to your own uh, office uh, where they will also tell you the guide you regarding the entire administrative routing process. You can discuss with them in your own office nowadays. Earlier, there were not grant officers available in the research institutions or the universities. I'm not sure still with the universities, whether it still exists, but definitely in many of the research institutions, they have a position of grants manager or a grants officer who helps a PI in facilitating these uh, various uh, administrative issues so that he can or she can apply for the grant and then uh, you need to discuss with your seniors the dean or the chair whosoever may be uh, at the helm of affairs discuss about these bureaucratic paths to be followed and seek his suggestions and then you, you can move to the next level so it is important to know the project cycle so the project cycle starts with the funding first thing is you have to look for the funding and uh, then when you have to look for the funds, you have to develop the proposal. And once you have developed the proposal, it has to be routed through a proper channel. So you have to submit a proposal, set up the project. And if it is 
recommend it for funding. And then you have to manage the project for the next, uh, whether it's three year project or a five year project. And ultimately any work we start, it comes to an end. And then we have to close the project, write project uh, review, I mean, sorry, the project uh, report and submit to the particular agency. So that gives you just a brief about the project life cycle. Then how to go about writing a proposal? That's the next question. Now, before uh, beginning, we, uh, it's always said that, you know, we should start with a positive thought. If whether we get the project or not, it's not in our hands, but let us do our best to see that I am satisfied. I have done my bit. So rest is not in my hands. So why, why to worry about it? But before that, we need to do our groundwork and start working towards the writing or the conceptualization of the proposal. So how do we go about it? Before we begin, we need to have an idea, which is very important. And to see this idea that it should see the light of the day, we need to have a thorough background knowledge about this idea and then see that what is the right kind of a funding agency who will be appropriate for this particular project. And because your project should be broad, should broadly fall into the identified priority areas of the funding agency. And it's very, very important that you generate some preliminary data for your idea, which you have conceived. And then find out if you feel that it is, uh, it cannot be done uh, single-handedly, you need partners for this, then you need to find right kind of partners, discuss this idea if it is feasible, that we can uh, take it to the next level, then you can develop the proposal. Now, what is important for you to know when you are writing a proposal, you need to know that a funding agency generally follow a similar format for a particular proposal. Through these, there may be, though there may be slight variation depending on whether you are submitting a research proposal or you are submitting a proposal for fellowship award, or for international collaborations. Each has its uh, different connotations. So what does the general format for a research proposal says? It says it should have a project title and affiliations. It should have a proper abstract or a summary, a well thought about uh, research plan, which has specific aims or key questions, background and significance, why it is important, you should have done some preliminary studies and the rationale for putting up this kind of a proposal. Research design and methodology, including milestones and timelines need to be clearly defined. Of course, expected outcome. References, collaborative interactions and future plans. Very important to have institutional approvals in place and budgetary details or the budgetary justification for each head. And it goes without saying that we need to have the resume of the PI, co-PI or the collaborators, if any. So general format for proposals through for the awards is a little different. You need to give personal details, academic qualifications, other qualifications, if any work experience, if you have already got some awards, fellowships or honors, do mention them, publications, grants, patents, and the proposal which includes the same format as for the research proposal, but you know, they may say it should be written in 500 words or two pages as the format demands. Referees details for, for recommendation of the award and a forward, of course, which is very, very important. So what is to be kept in mind while thinking of submitting a proposal? So it's very, very important that you read the guidelines carefully and check on the eligibility criteria. You know, sometimes it happens, you have completed the work till end and then you realize, oh, I am not eligible for this. So let's avoid such kind of things. We, it's nice to make a draft proposal and chalk out the budget well in advance. And there has to be focus should be on long-term goals. Make sure that work is not already being done. It's very, very important. So that means we need to be thorough with our literature review which gives you a fairly good idea that, well, this kind of work has not been proposed by someone else. So while writing a proposal, there are some do's and don'ts which we need to keep in mind while writing the proposal. So what are those? 
so when you talk about the so called the cover letter it should be short giving a general outline of what you are submitting it can mention if the budget goes out of the limits or if there is any conflict of interest lengthy cover letters are really not encouraged so the next comes the title and affiliations of the research proposal so try to be as concise as possible so that you know the title gives reviewer an idea of what you are intending to investigate in the proposal it should be uh, concise and explicit title needs to match with the objectives as i did mention and the complete address and contact details of pi and copi are very very important uh the it shouldn't be too general or too long or too short title that begins with the studies on you know very generic kind of a thing they usually do not get you know encouraged title ending with a model plant or a model animal try to avoid such things yeah it's very very important we should define the significance of the work should outline the hypothesis on which the proposal is based uh, should define major objectives and the potential impact of the work proposed and uh, it shouldn't be too long or too short and shouldn't be too theoretical giving only the literature of a review which is very important when we talk about introduction what should be the uh, the content of the introduction it should address the following the reviewer should know about the genesis of your proposal highlight the key questions you are trying to address in this proposal hypothesis should be strong and supported by literature or the preliminary data from your lab it's very very important give details of the work already done in the area and how your proposal is different from the already done work state why your proposal is important and what would be the output and how it's going to be useful not only to you but to the broader community as such so and it's very important not to give exhaustive review of literature only to provide information that is provide information only which is relevant to your work omission of key references relevant to your work makes your proposal weak so you need to give a little air to just this so objectives should be clear specific and should sound achievable within the provided time period all the objectives stated should be in order that each object is linked to the next one that's very important so that you know you can make a nice story out of the whole thing and uh, my humble request to all the young pas especially is don't write too ambitious project you i know it sounds very easy to do it on the paper but when you do it exactly with your own hands it takes time so let be realistic with your objectives now comes important aspect is a methodology work plan versus timelines it's very very important to have a frame a clear work plan timelines so that the reviewer gets a fair idea about your work the methodology proposed should be able to connect to the objectives proposed you need to be sure that the techniques used would address the problem proposed by you and always mention that the problems you could face and suggest alternative strategies many times it happens i have seen myself in these last more than 20 years of my experience in dpt you know they give one uh, you know methodology or the work plan and then committee feels oh uh, this may not work but if there is a uh, alternate strategy proposed by the pi then committee feels confident no they uh, they feel that the pi uh, envisages if this particular uh, methodology doesn't work he ha he or she has proposed an alternate strategy that means he ha he they have they have done their due diligence and it gets through so work distribution if it's a, a collaborative project or it's a multi institutional project or multi pi project the work distribution among the partners should be clearly mentioned and defined and it's it is recommended that we don't give exhaustive details of the methods or the techniques to be used Uh, do not incorporate multiple techniques just to elaborate your data work plan should not be too ambitious as i said it should be doable within the given time frame and unnecessary overlap of work among partners should be avoided very important we need to plan because uh, we have uh, this is a time bound activity we have to give timelines vis a vis activities you need to have a proper flow chart there in your project proposal 
and of course reference form a very important component of your uh, research proposal they should be in the order as they appear in the text with proper numbering i mean they may sound very uh, trivial things but they do matter uh, and the even the reviewers do uh, lay emphasis on these kind of small small things the style followed should be consistent throughout the reference section a proper format of references as per american physiological association may be developed may be followed software tools like reference manager are available there which can help you and assist you in this endeavor and it is recommended that never use at alls in your references don't cite references that do not appear in the text budget the most important component of the research proposal budget should be given year wise and it has to be given under different heads consumables equipments manpower contingency or wherever you find it appropriately it needs to be justified and a very important thing is that you need to mention about the existing facilities and the equipments as you all know funding agencies uh, always want to know what is the existing facility available with the pi so that you know they can uh, conduct the uh, proposal what you have uh, proposed and believe me be realistic with your budget don't propose inflated budgets because what is who is evaluating your proposal who is evaluating your proposal it is not menakshi or uh, admin uh, science managers like me it is the scientists who are sitting in the panel today they only evaluate these research proposals so be realistic with your budget i can share my experience many times what happen young pis especially or sometimes they feel oh uh, for example a pcr machine somebody wrote 1 lakh or 2 lakh uh, then the committee feels no no this person cannot uh, buy this equipment in a particular amount and the committees have increased the budget or the consumable grant for what so be realistic my the point about i am trying to prove is that be realistic with your budget and your they should be uh, they should not be inflated yeah very important that you should also include the buyer data reason being uh, you know many times uh, the reviewer doesn't know you so how will he or she feel confident that you you have a right kind of expertise whatever you have proposed you will do it so best for that is that your biodata will speak for you it should have a your name current affiliation past research experiences your education publications and previous grants or awards whatever is there you should mention your skills Uh, your experience mentioned should match with the demand what happens many times suppose you write a project and you write on a area which is which doesn't match with your existing uh, qualification then the reviewer feels um, he he has a doubt whether you will be able to do because you don't have a relevant expertise and many times believe me the projects get rejected because of this that you don't have a right kind of expertise so we don't need to hide if we have received grants from other agencies earlier it was not possible to find out but nowadays on the click of a button you know what you whatever is available what you have what grant you have applied what grant you have got so let's be honest it's very important to be honest to our own selves first if we want to be a good scientists in the long run and uh, no multi directional proposals or or even a single uh, pi driven projects how to go about no especially for the multi disciplinary projects you need to take on board all the people who you feel are going to be a part of your ecosystem in that particular multi disciplinary research approach because there are many projects which can be driven single uh, by a single pi or two pis come together they have a idea but there are big big problems now in fact uh, with the recent pandemic of covid things have really changed people have to address a problem from multi dimensional ways so it is really like that uh, you know elephant you see it in the dark and people uh, who so touches whatever part of this his body and they think that if somebody says it's a rope it's a wall it's a fan so the purpose of showing this uh, figure is just to tell you that how you have to address a multi disciplinary research proposal from different uh, angles so i mean this just uh, gives one idea uh, this is an extract from the rumi he says the elephant in the dark who so touches him and he feels oh i have got the right cord i have touched the right. so that is i just 
Now, now what is a multidisciplinary research? How does it work? So where discipline works in a self-contained manner with the, there, what is happening? I have an idea. I can tackle one or two aspects of it, but it needs the support of other people, other experts also. That is why there is a need for a multidisciplinary research proposal. And how do we write that? So what are the benefits of a multidisciplinary research proposal? It is essential for addressing a complex real world problems, not exclusively scientific. It can have a social connotations too. It leads to the innovative research, new discoveries and innovation, inventions and interventions. In fact, you know, uh, because of this multidisciplinary research approach, new areas have come up. I mean, uh, some long time back, we knew uh, there was informatics, then came bioinformatics, nanotechnology, even, I mean, now we have uh, areas like click chemistry. I have, I had not heard about it. So multidisciplinary research has its own advantages. So what are the must haves for a multidisciplinary research? A genuine respect for the each other's disciplinary approach. It's most important when we begin to think of a multidisciplinary research proposal. It's very important for all the PIs who want to come together. There should be a respect for each other. No, that I will say, oh, my area is very important, so it needs more funding. Your area is less important. No, it cannot work like this. It's very important. We need to respect each other's disciplines and value the partnership. Uh, there has to be a good leadership and a clear view that facilitates the informal interaction. It's very important once we have to develop this multidisciplinary research, we need to talk to each other at different levels. And very important, we need to have adequate resources for research and administrative support for forming, coordinating, and motivating the multidisciplinary research. The most important thing I have seen uh, in my experience especially in these multidisciplinary uh, proposals, what happens? People come together because they say, and they see there's a particular scheme and they come together, they want to apply, they apply the research uh, project, it's funding, funded, but you know, then they don't see it eye to eye to each other. I have seen many times, believe me, I mean, it was hard for me. We went on the site visits and then I had to close many of these projects midterm. Though it lands us in the audit uh, objections, but I had no option then to, uh, you know, close those midterm projects. So that is why multidisciplinary projects we really need to think through before we apply. And uh, we need to have a flexibility. We need to have adaptability and creativity, good communication and listening skills. Because in the multidisciplinary projects, we need to listen to the other side. I may have an idea and I feel it's the excellent idea, but I should keep my eyes and ears open and listen to my uh, fellow uh, colleague also who has idea. And I think maybe he, uh, his idea is so wonderful that I had not even thought of uh, from that uh, aspect. So we need to have an open mind to the ideas coming from other disciplines and experiences. The most important things we need to be a good team member. An ability to br bridge the gap between theory and practical. And we should understand there is a high tolerance for the ambiguity. If there are questions, we need to deliberate and discuss. So what makes a multidisciplinary proposal complex? If you all know it's a, because first, first thing is it involves the participation of multiple collaborating uh, scientists, programs, departments, or the institutions, involvement of multiple projects and the core resources. Substantial institutional commitment is, uh, is needed there. And there has to be related but distinct components which are a part of a multidisciplinary project, but they need to be addressed. So there are ma major challenges which we face in the multidisciplinary research. The most important thing is we need to keep all the members engaged. And every member of the big uh, family needs to be equally important member of the family, keeping the specific goals aligned with the overall vision. We need to manage timelines. We need to obtain data from all the partners and collate them into beautiful research. Budget distribution has to be done properly. Personality and capability management, which is very important. So before we begin, so, what should we do? We need to be sure of the cross disciplines 
that are to be involved, including the kind of expertise needed. And we really have to find out the best fit if we want to be successful. Have a preliminary data, which becomes very important to support our hypothesis. A cohesive research team is very, very important with knowledge and expertise in suitable domains. We, uh, language and the communication issues to be resolved at early stage if there is any. Institutional structures and procedures uh, both or uh, for, for both multi ends need to be understood. And there has to be a healthy interaction with the partners and every stage which will lead to the development of the synergistic solutions. So there are um, three phase plan for the multidisciplinary projects. First thing is the framing, then comes the collaboration and then comes the refinement. So when we talk about the framing of a multidisciplinary project, we need to finalize the key participants and the collaborators, then define the proposal outline, which would include the vision, the goals, the themes. And once we have all these things in place, then we start writing our outline assignment and identify the graphic draft, the budget estimates, and uh, we have to also understand if our university resources are there, which will have to support us in the form of administration, space, uh, cost sharing, if any, then interpret solicitation and identify appropriate teaming strategies. Then comes the collaborations. We have to refine partner participations, identify external commitment letters, finalize writing assignments, identify management structure, which is important, refine budget and cost sharing by the partners. It, then we need to compile the technical plan, draft text, a lot of all these things which come into making a good multidisciplinary project. And once we do it, then obviously it doesn't get uh, refined in the first way. It needs uh, first draft, second draft, third draft. So then we need to do a refinement and to help each other, we need track writing assignments and follow up with the missing contributions. We need to then finalize the management structure, finalize budget, justification, cost share, all sort of things which are important components of a multidisciplinary project. Review the technical plan. Is it in consonance with the proposed overall vision and the mission of the multidisciplinary program? And make a final edits, whatever best possible is to be done with the refinement of the project proposal should be taken into consideration. So proposal writing, then next comes, once you have the rough draft, then comes, it's important, you need to follow the guidelines as given by the funding agency for the support of these multidisciplinary, even uh, single, uh, single PI driven projects. Establish a shared doc, the best would be to establish a shared document repository and guidelines for editing file names and file ownership for all the partners, assign writing sections and prepare drafts because one person cannot write the whole project proposal. So you need to uh, divide the work among the partners. Compile the first draft, revise, circulate till it is uh, you know revised again. So it's in a final shape. Internal external review with additional revision if needed. Full revision for unified style, consistency and final checkup for uh, references and uh, other things and compliance checks and then you can sign off and send it. <laughs> so again in this also the introduction and background is important. Evaluate the importance and significance of the work proposed which I did mention. So multidisciplinarity collaboration uh, should be clearly defined and articulated and should be an integral and well justified with for the proposed work should be understandable by non-experts because what happens, you are an expert in your field, but your proposal is not seen every time by all the experts. There will be a couple of few experts, but there are uh, some scientists who may not be 100% experts like you are in you. So it's very important for you to put up your thoughts and put up your proposal in such a way that even a non-expert uh, can also understand. Uh, you, what you intend to do. So define the key terms of for members of the team and experts who are less familiar with your you know, subject. So significance of the proposed work is very, very important component of the proposal. It should be 
explicitly mentioned so that your uh, non-expert reverse also gets a good feel of it, whether the proposed work addresses and fulfills the needs of the relevant disciplines. Is your proposed work innovative? Highlight the value of the multidisciplinary approach. This is a very, very important component of a multidisciplinary project. Again, here also, the, when you talk about the methodology, you have to strike a balance between providing a clear overview and the specific details, keeping in view multidisciplinary approach. You need to give maybe a month, month to month may be difficult, but yes, quarterly timelines of the project proposal can be given and should be given clearly. So again, the big question comes the budget. Budget should be divided according to the effort and the project needs. Suppose uh, I am doing a very minuscule component of the entire multidisciplinary project. So my budget should be reflected in the same way. And compared to the other colleague of mine who, who has a major R&D component where the budget needs to be much more, it has to be rationalized as per the defined objectives. The need for external partner to be looked into with the prior yeah, budget division. Define your overall budget and prepare it. Justification has to be for each component. That's You know the government system works very well on the justification. So we need to justify each and every component of the budget proposed. CV of each PI, as I did mention, that we need to have the CV of each uh, PI so that it helps us in understanding his or her uh, research uh, acumens and uh, its relevance to the current project he or she can achieve. So now, especially in case of uh, partnership programs, these uh, multidisciplinary or collaborative projects, these are very, very important things. We need to take uh, cognizance of few things uh, when a project is, is uh, so-called approved. There has to be, a, you have to sign an inter-institutional partnership agreements with the partnering institutions, because what happens at the end of the project, for example, you get a good uh, product or a process or a lead, then there is an issue, uh, I will say it's mine, my collaborator will say it's mine, third person says it's mine. So in order to avoid all these kind of uh, conflicts, we need to have these non-disclosure agreements, confidentiality disclosure agreements, and revenue sharing in place. All these have to be in place. Of course, in uh, now another thing of uh, earlier, there was no agreement to be signed with the funding agencies, but for the past uh, decade, it has been made mandatory for both uh, private uh, agencies as well as the government uh, agencies, like um, government supported institutions to have an agreement with the funding agency. The only difference is when we talk about the private uh, institutions like MIT or TEDI, for example, they have to, uh, once we issue the sanction order for the particular project, then the agreement has to be signed with the funding agency. And after that, the first release is made. For, for the uh, for starting the project. Now you have done your lot you have done your due diligence so put your hard labor and submitted a project. Now what happens to your project once it reaches the funding agency? Believe me, this is the real scenario once your project proposal comes, we receive projects throughout the year and uh, I mean I as a project manager or a project administrator, I don't know where I start with. So, because what happens with a PI, it is a one project. And then he's obviously, he's concerned if he doesn't hear from the program officer for a, a month or a, a days, and uh, then he or she feels he gets jitter. Oh, what happened to my project? They would not have considered it. But believe me, we do take each and every project into uh, whichever has been submitted to us and we look at it, there's a process. So I will share in next few slides, what is the process we are currently following. Now, what happens once uh, earlier, we were uh, accepting all the proposals by a hard copy. After that, uh, for the past more than 10 uh, years or so, we have stopped accepting the hard copies. We accept the soft copy through a, a system called ePROMIS, that's electronic project management system, where a PI has to register then you generate a login and password, and then you can apply uh, 
there is each and every step it guides you through how you apply for the project and then you can submit online all the documents what are necessary for the project and once you submit the project proposal and the best part here is you can track it down which stage it is now which was not earlier past possible when we were doing it offline so once you have submitted a proposal it grows goes through the pro this, uh, process uh, the first step is the isc what isc is it's the internal screening committee which meets every year to uh, evaluate the project's receipt for a, for the previous month and uh, then uh, after this once it is uh, crosses this uh, isc has approved your project proposal and then it goes for a uh, peer review Peer review is uh, is done by the external scientists like you are who uh, who are sitting here in the audience, and they review the project proposal, and after that it goes to the next level uh, that's called a technical evaluation committee or uh, the acronym is TEC. Here, uh, what happens on the experts who are the members of these uh, specific TECs for different areas, these uh, project proposals are uh, presented by the TEC members. To whom they have been assigned, and they will defend the project if it has to be approved. Why? If ha it, ha it needs a revision, why and how it has to be revised, and if it is rejected, what are the reasons for that? So this tech, tech committee uh, uh, approves the project. Uh, I mean, recommends the projects up to uh, 25 lakhs. Now we have increased it to uh, 40 lakhs recently, and uh, then uh, those projects which get recommended here, they are. Are done the due diligence is done by the respective program officers and then they uh, send these uh, files for uh, next level like uh, they will ask you for the quotations and necessary for your whatever equipment you have proposed and then it goes through the finance and it gets recommended finally and you get a sanction order now if you have the project cost is more than 40 lakhs it goes to the next uh, committee that is called a stag that is scientific and technical and advisory group. So here the PI is asked to come and make a presentation before the committee and uh, present your objectives and the work plan. And uh, once uh, the committee re uh, looks at the re reference re reviews, uh, uh, review as well as the presentation and discussion with the PI and they recommend it and it goes through the, as I mentioned, it goes through the internal finance examination and finally the sanction orders issued. Now there are many projects which go beyond five crores and they go to another uh, tier of com committee which is called a biotechnology apex board. So these uh, projects go there, they are considered by this committee and uh, based on the discussions and uh, presentation if required, they, the PI is called and finally, sometimes what happens, we may not call the PI, but we will tell the program officer to defend the project. And once uh, the bio, uh, this Biotech Apex board uh, clears or recommends your proposal, then it goes through the final uh, you know, uh, cycle of financial uh, approvals because uh, they need those uh, quotations and things like that. It come, uh, Ultimately, we are able to, once it's approved by the finance, we may recommend, uh, I want to tell the uh, August gathering here, uh, recommended by a committee doesn't mean it is approved by the finance. Until and unless it is approved by the finance, we really cannot say anything. We just say it's a recommended. Otherwise, we issue a proper sanction order and then the grant is released. As I mentioned earlier, if it's a government uh, organization, we release the first year grant. If it's a private organization, we have to have a MOA in place and then we release the grant. Now, some, uh, some, what happens, you know, many times you apply, you send a project to us and then you say, oh, funding agency is not sending an acknowledgement. Funding agency is not responding. So I would request all of you to be patient and uh, definitely you will hear from the funding agency, if the, your project has been accepted, you will hear. If it has not been accepted, you will hear. So please be patient. So what happens to your project? Either it is approved or it is rejected. So let us go first with the, on a positive note. If your project is approved, so then again, what happens? You, you start, you get a money, you start, uh, uh, you have already identified your research topic. So then you start working on the project. You, uh, I mean, there's a process every year, we'll ask you to come for the review. 
and uh, make a presentation or you sub submit a, a report. And the most important thing is after you submit a report, obviously you get a first year grant. You don't get entire money in a single year. You get the money in a, on a per year basis. So once your first year is over, so you need to submit us the utilization certificates and the statement of expenditures, which is very important component. I thought I'll discuss this also with you so that, you know, you understand many times, oh, the money has not come in time. So what are the reasons for that? First year money has come, second year has not come. So there is a format, each agency has a format for submission of utilization certificates. Believe me, it sounds very trivial. Oh, there are certain things. But believe me, this has to be looked after by the finance. And they are very edgy about each and every line what is mentioned in this format. It needs to be addressed. Whatever they ask for, please give some time to this. What happens many of, because you are all scientists, you look into, oh, your objectives are this. You are very much active in your research. You want to spend more time and this seems filling up a utilization certificate is not very important from a researcher's point of view. But believe me, if you want to get funding in time, please do spend some time on utilization certificates. Fill it whatever it has. Uh, the, there are different columns. And each column is explicit in itself. Fill the uh, necessary information which has been sought for. Uh, they want, uh, I mean, I don't want to read it. It's, it is it's self-explanatory. You need to address these. You need to submit this, you uh, see. By the 31st March, you know the uh, calendar year, the financial uh, calendar for the government of India is from 1st April to the 31st March of the next year. So you need to submit us uh, the utilization certificate. And the important thing is it should be signed and very few small, small things, uh, you know, you won't believe. Many times I had to return the UCs because it was signed, not stamped, which is not an intention of a PI that he doesn't want to stamp it. But, you know, it's a small uh, error. You need to look into it. Head of the institute has to sign it. All those things need to be looked into. And of course, you uh, with the utilization certificate, you need to submit as a latest statement of expenditure. And there are different columns, uh, which you need to fill and submit to DPT or to any funding agency for that matter, so that your next grant is released. So for this, uh, those who are, who are lucky, who make it, they get their grants, they need to uh, look into these things. Like in, nowadays, what is happening? We cannot make any release until unless you have mentioned the interest earned on this grant. So, and you know, this has to be submitted in a, there's a common portal uh, developed by the government of India, which is called Bharat Kosh. So interest earned uh, or interest uh, incurred has to be reflected in the UCIC and it has to be submitted uh, in the Bharat Kosh. You, they generate a receipt and that receipt has to be submitted along with the UCSE. And the list of assets which you have purchased like an, under your uh, non -rec uh, recurring that is equipments. In, you get an 18 months window to, to buy the equipment which have been uh, uh, sanctioned in your project. Manpower details has to be given year-wise, post-wise. And as I mentioned earlier, UC has to be financial year-wise. And MOUs need to be uh, in place with the Grantee Institute before the second year release, as I mentioned for the government and for the NGO before the first year release. So uh, now comes the, yes, we talked about good things about the, you have got projects got accepted, but God forbid, yes, uh, what happens if it has got rejected? So we need to understand why my project has got rejected. The problem, maybe the problem which I propose is not of sufficient importance. Maybe whatever information I was expected to provide, I did not pr provide. And uh, whatever objectives, I proposed they were too ambitious to be dealt with in the specific time. Or the other reason could be my approach was not okay. The methods do not link to the objectives what I propose or the study proposes too diffuse. It lacks clarity or it lacks novelty. The approach lacks scientific imagination. Uh, it could be at an investigator level or the PI or the co-PI does not have relevant expertise in the area proposed or he or she is not familiar with the current literature. 
or you know many times it happens you don't uh, uh, you have a pr proof of concept but you don't have a relevant publications which gives the reviewer a confidence that you will be able to carry out this there could be uh, problems at uh, at different levels or uh, there are no uh, equipments present in the department so com committee feels or they cannot carry out the proposed objectives budget is very inflated or unrealistic and the equipment proposed many times we have uh, rejected project because whatever equipment they had proposed they were not in consonance with the objectives they had proposed in the proposal so there could be different reasons uh, for the project which can get uh, you know rejected so yes uh, rejection or selection is a is a part of the life so let's not get uh, worried about why my project is got rejected we need to go back and, uh, and do some introspection and see why my project has got rejected we need to accept it okay we don't have to lose hope many times it happens so we need to see uh, introspect and why my project could be uh, whether the reason could be i need to look into the reasons why my project proposal has been rejected and do some self assessment of the proposal in light of the comments which have been given by funding agencies we need to address those issues carefully whether it is i lack the expertise try to stick to my area of expertise or if my preliminary data is not enough i need to do some more work and resubmit submit again the proposal if it was it really uh, over ambitious did i not look into it i need to look at the realistic work plan and if my hypothesis was not strong enough i need to go back to the literature and you know the list can go on and uh, till uh, we really realize that uh, there was definitely some flaw in my thinking process many times what happens now now of late uh, many funding there are many funding agencies as you all will be aware now because of the corporate social responsibility there is each of uh, these agency with a turnover of 1000 crores or more they need to spend 2% of their net profits on r and d uh, and there was a report that they say that 50 to 60% of the indian uh, donors do not know of enough uh, you know um, eligible uh, there are organizations they don't know where to give money whom to give so for example i mean uh, there is a bill and gates foundation they support a huge number of programs uh, in uh, india we need to think beyond government agencies you know the government agencies kitties are not very big so please uh, open your horizons go and do apply to the funding private uh, organizations also philanthropic organizations are also there so i thought i'll just share some general rules for success of any research proposal with you as i mentioned there are many uh, schemes available and uh, now you need to just have an innovative idea and look around you beyond the scope of these government agencies only so as it is said that it's important that we come out of our comfort zones and then uh, i mean there's uh, nothing grows in these comfort zones there so the bottom line is to reach out to more organizations uh, with your ideas talk about your ideas discuss so there are opportunities you know it's like you know that uh, opportunities are like sunrises if we wait too long we miss them so what i want to emphasize is that please uh, do look into different agencies your i discuss your ideas take it out uh, so that you know you can apply but many at the times what has been uh, my experience with me oh if i submit a project whether it will get funded there are apprehensions i always feel see do your job if your project is good it addresses the uh, the issues in a correct manner i can assure you no your project will always get funded so as uh, i would like to say that nothing is impossible it is all in the mind we need to tell ourselves we need to talk to our own selves that well if uh, my this project has been rejected there must be some reason let me not ponder over this that this has not been given uh, this has not made it let me uh, revisit my document think through my whole process and i'm sure it will happen the most important these days earlier it was happening you know you could pick up uh, lines here and there but due to the internet 
we really need to be very very careful about the plagiarism it and plagiarism could be of any form please stay away from this uh, in the uh, this plagiarism it will really not be good and i would at the end say success is not final failure is not fatal it is the courage that continues and counts and i urge all the scientists please do apply do reach out there are different schemes available with different funding agencies and i'm sure you will go you will be able to make it i thought i'll share some of these website addresses with you which can help you to look into this and keep visiting our dbt website i will talk about dbt website keep visiting our dbt website it has a lot of information or sometimes just pick up a phone and call the program officer yes your next question would be everybody may not uh, answer but that's okay uh, if somebody answers it's well and good if somebody doesn't answer it doesn't make matter you shouldn't take it otherwise you do your job otherwise you will oh i would have picked up a phone and called the officer many time many people this time are calling me oh, what happened to the builder program are you increasing the deadline i mean i i did reply to them i said yes it has been increased so if sometimes you know somebody doesn't answer it's okay with this i would like to uh, thank you all of you for the patient hearing and i'm re ready to take questions thank you so much uh, to the mt uh, family for inviting me for this webinar thank you so much what a great lecture it was minakshi uh, you did a great job i don't know sir whether i could uh, justify it and i am the best lectures but I there is always a i have a lot to learn from my seniors here who are all present here more than justified more than justified <laughs> thank you so much sir thank you so much sir <laughs> no in fact you told everything about how to write all the secrets tips about how to write a quality proposal which will get funded and you also motivated our scientists research scholars faculties just don't restrict yourself only to government funded agency go beyond expand yes, yourself sir. yes sir that's important sir. so many funding opportunity available in fact founder president knowing this has started a created a structure for this acds 1 acds 2 acds 3 and then being looked after by searching schemes in different disciplines science and technology humanities and also inspire program training and development so there's a big process <laughs> the uh, the system available today to search the scheme and also to assess the quality every directorate we have uh, every university we have created a directorate of research and innovation that's very good sir because uh, having these grants managers in these uh, organizations are really helpful for pis because pi is hard pressed from many sides he has a teaching then he has a research and then he feels these are the trivial things and this is what uh, i used to uh, we get these problems with these ucscs i mean they don't uh, i mean genuinely they don't have this thing that they don't want to do it but somehow it misses uh, the this thing and our finance people are very very rigid on this correct and you know we are very prompt in returning the interest we are very prompt in refunding yes, whatever balance amount meticulously calculated and returned promptly sir nowadays we cannot release any grant that is the first thing uh, which has happened now right. earlier what was happening uh, we were uh, this whatever uh, interest earned was there we were uh, re we were adjusting it yes. now uh, it has completely no we cannot readjust it so it has to be deposited with the bharat kosh probably a uh, government also needs some revenue i mean that's that goes to the consolidated fund that is minakshi, how minakshi minakshi you have large number of questions so <laughs> i'm ready to help uh, to answer questions i think i'll, I I'll, I'll be happy to answer should i go to the chat box or how does it work i think the first the panel has to speak sure, right, sir. exactly no, sir. the panel will uh, will speak all panel so, now request professor ajit verma yeah. to say a few words because he is a person who brings a large number of projects from different funding agencies so he is my guru ji he <laughs> <laughs> from jnu yes, and what you verma ji and i congratulate you for excellent presentation thank you so much most sir. of the points were covered which people come to the mind i think project i got a two questions to for sir, my sir. own knowledge yeah one thing before i was telling in amit culture all the panels have to be reviewed by dr rajesh rajesh sharma 
And he makes an excellent comment sometimes. I always send to him and he always comes out with some idea. He always know I am the best. No, it's not true. He gives very, very good tips to modify the project. And we follow them. It is a very good culture that our founder person has established. Now, I may not have a two binary questions, but I have been a recipient of direct as well as the civil project. Hmm. Can I apply for second direct project? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Definitely, you can. I think I've got some new ideas. So yes, sir, sir, you it. can apply. Oh, you, have different, you know, under a BIRAC, there are different schemes. Uh, if you have an idea, you can apply for a big, big grant. That is Biotechnology yes. Ignition Grant. Then there is, there are, there are different schemes for different levels. You can apply, sir. Okay, thank you. The second thing, uh, we had a colloquium on genome, on genome engineering some two weeks, three weeks ago, uh, where we got some beautiful ideas. Sir. And the last two two weeks, myself, uh, my group, and Dr. Nutan Kausik group, we are discussing on the matter, we come out with some novel ideas for the project. Sir. Now, here comes a question. Mm -hmm. We are about six person in the group, both the groups. Um, mm -hmm. Two, three, and our five, eight person. We have to have a PI and then co-PI. Coordinator. There has to be a coordinator, overall coordinator. coordinator. So we can have more than five, six coordinators? No, no, I mean, there will be one coordinator and five, six PIs. Yes. Uthan is well aware of PI, PI, PI will only one. Hold the PI of DBT. <laughs> and she has done many projects with me. She uh, knows it. Dr. Nutan Kaushik. Yes. Yeah. So we are discussing and very soon we expect then that's two, three, three weeks to come out with a novel project. Well, I'm sure Nutan would know all the intricacies which are involved in uh, submitting a multidisciplinary project. Yeah. Okay. There should be no issue on that. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you, Professor Ajit Verma. Dr. Murthy. Yes, sir. You should tell that STIF, MIT Science Innovation Foundation, has started now making chapters in about 25 science and innovation countries which are leader. The chapter, uh, Germany, is headed by the president in India. Dr. Ajit Verma. Yes, yes. <laughs> and he's sir, also I know one when I was when I, sir, when I was in JNU, I knew his association with Germany since then. <laughs> Dr. Minakshi, Professor Ajit sir. Verma is also one among those two percent of top scientists. Yes, sir, I, I'm aware of. I'm aware of that. Globe, and uh, he has more than hundred books to his credit, four hundred research papers published. And he has created uh, more, more than seven. Sir, that's what I was telling you. Uh, when I see my seniors, my teachers, I feel I have a long way to go, sir. Right. <laughs> we have established, founder has established to give science and technology and innovation a big boost, a foundation. Okay. In 2008, oh. Amiti Science, Technology and Innovation Foundation, where he is the chairman. Sir. And uh, he is, uh, and Prasajit Verma is the vice president of that. And uh, the, so this has now chapters country-wise, like yes, Germany, because founder himself was there for 28 years. That the chancellor was born and brought up over there and studied yes, there. So we have first chapter was on Germany. Now we are looking at the US, South Korea, Israel, and we'll have chapter for Japan. So we will have different chapters to give a focus on research relevant to that country and the schemes available over there. So this is a new concept, the chapter concept for foundation. Sure. Now may I now invite Dr. B.C. Das, who is the chairman of University uh, Research uh, Council, and also uh, he is the Dean of Health Sciences, a great scientist we are very proud of. And over to you, Dr. Das. He has built a big group in cancer biology. <laughs> thank you, thank, thank you, Dr. Silvamurthy. So, uh, I think first of all, I must congratulate Dr. Munsi for the excellent lecture that you have covered each and every aspect meticulously, not only individual projects, also, also multi um, center or a multi uh, EI project. And most importantly, that point which we always face for the young faculty and the students, those who are writing projects is uh, the most important thing that the focused objectives and the focused title. And uh, you have nicely covered that and also the budgeting. They are mostly the young faculty are over ambitious. So they put a lot of objectives and 
budget also over ambitious. So they, I, I always advise them, first start with your first project or a second project, go with the moderate and the very sober budget. Don't be so over um, uh, uh, ambitious. So that makes that he has not much, he has not done or she has not done a single project, now asking for a crore rupees project. Then everybody that how she, he or she is really able to do that project or not, you prove your worth first. And that is why I think DST has initiated that is that the initial grant that the young um, yes, investigator and the initial uh, career grant. There are many grants in the DBT and DST. So that's nice thing. So that is you have nicely focused that don't be over ambitious. Yes. So you start with the very moderate uh, things and then you go ahead. So these are very crucial point and I think all the, all the points have been nicely covered. And I think there are, um, uh, though it is showing something 500, but it has more people on the YouTube and all, more than 1000 it will be. And uh, I think it will be very helpful for all our young colleagues for their um, understanding and how to go about of these projects. So it's, it's really marvelous and thank you so much. Yeah. And you have been always the, our uh, um, uh, very uh, helpful and the ambassador rather. <laughs> I mean, it is, you have been always uh, extended help and uh, thank you so much for finding your time and to contribute. I have nothing. Thank much. you, Dr. Das. Thank you so much. You were mentioning about Dr. Nutan Kaushik. <laughs> So we all have gems and jewels, Founder called them gems of science and, and also jewels. So now here is another jewel, Dr. Nutan Kaushik. So can you just give some remarks, Dr. Nutan, you have already worked with Meenakshi for a long time and over to you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Meenakshi ji, when uh, Dr. Nutan Kaushik showed interest to join MIT, I did not give any attention or did not show any interest. He was long years, very successful person in Terry, as you know. But she contacted again, I avoided again. And yeah. once she told I'm joining, for so four weeks or three months, I did not take seriously. I told after three months, if she's still there, then I'll meet her. But she has proven to be rightly told a jewel. My compliment to Nutanji. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Nutan. And she has brought a large number of bilateral, multilateral projects. And she is also the director general for the Amity Foundation uh, for yeah. the Food and Agriculture, Amity Food and Agriculture Foundation. And uh, she is spearheading this whole agricultural group in a big way. And it's a great asset. Over to you, Dr. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Minakshi. It was wonderful listening to your presentation as always. So, so we have been interacting uh, since Dr. Munshi joined DBT uh, as a young officer. So that so our contact is so long. So, uh, 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 Dr. Minakshi, uh, your presentation gave a very good uh, uh, overview about how to write a good proposal, particularly for the young people. It will be very useful. So it will be nice if you can just share the, uh, this presentation with us so that it will be uh, it can be shared with others who could not be able to join this today. I have just some, one simple question because uh, in DBT you have an internal screening committee. Huh? That's not an expert committee. That's a committee set up by the officers, program officers. So how do you, like, what are the, like, uh, based on your experiences, can you please share with the, the young people, like, what are the major reasons for the rejection at the ISC level itself? Because once it is rejected at ISC level, it can not go the further, uh, it cannot go ahead. So if you can just share those things so that it will be helpful for the people to formulate their project so that it is not rejected at the first stage itself. Thank you. Thank you, Nutan. See, actually what happens, you know, many times we write, we want to start with the survey, yeah. then we will do survey, then we'll do this, they get it. Sometimes, as I said, they're too ambitious. The objectives and uh, the key questions they have asked, they do not, con uh, they're not, uh, you know, going well with your, uh, with your uh, methodology. Mm -hmm. You don't have alternate methodology available. And then, you know, these are some, your uh, references are not okay. They whatever you have proposed, it doesn't. Uh, you you don't see it in the your literature of review is very sketchy. Uh, 
Uh, these are the basic points. Otherwise, uh, you know, we uh, by and large, if the project objectives are well defined and there is a which is backed by the hypothesis, uh, preliminary. Very important is there should be some preliminary work done in the particular area where you intend to support the I mean, start this project. Very very important component. Your your uh, bio data. Uh, resume has to be there and it has to match with uh, your expertise has to match with what you have proposed i mean and they may sound very trivial uh, things but yeah. these are the basic things because we do look at this see the things as i showed one of the cartoons we receive a huge number of applications so we have to filter so then then we use different yardsticks to filter these projects is it also that you're looking for the novelty somewhere in that definitely point? yes yes it focus there has to be a focus yeah. it lacks novelty it doesn't have focus the object use are sketchy you know there are many things we do look into thank, thank you. you thank you thank you dr lupin i think dr minakshi and uh, the whole dbt they do a meticulous job in screening and compliments to all the experts within a dbt that they screen it judiciously, meticulously, so that no uh, the good proposal is rejected at uh, internal screening committee level. Sometimes it may happen with the oversight. So it can happen because, you know, we all are human beings. We are prone Absolutely. to mistakes. Absolutely. It can happen. Absolutely. We have with us Professor Esel Kotari. He is the vice president, uh, is another vice president of our foundation, uh, ASTIF. And he is giving a lot of impetus to research and innovation in Amity University, Rajasthan, Jaipur. And uh, so when I mentioned four Lancet publications, yesterday a nature publication, and also wow, a nature medicine publication from his campus has come. So Professor Kotari, can you just throw light on how are you promoting this research? Any, any questions? You yes. have any suggestions? Yes. Um, congratulations, uh, Dr. Minakshi ji, for explaining the whole project cycle in such a nice manner that anybody can understand what are the steps he's going to go through, starting from the submission or preparing the proposal to writing the final technical report. Wonderfully explained. And there's nothing, nothing that you have left out for anyone to understand. Uh, some of the projects, all of the projects will require innovative skills and innovations. So sometimes my one suggestion for principal investigators and those who are writing the proposals, uh, some of the innovative ideas are not understood even by the experts. And they are also human being and some of the innovations, but the principal investigator should be persuasive and he should be polite to explain the innovative idea that he has in his mind, investigator has in, in his mind so that they can understand. Uh, I did that when my builder program or IPLS program, it was earlier called as when the experts committee visited my university. Earlier I was working in the University of Rajasthan. So then I explained them my innovative ideas and then they appreciated and the builder program was sanctioned to me. Then uh, the uh, project cycle, you have very well explained. Madam, the builder program I was handling in Rajasthan University. Now, again, I am applying for builder program from MIT Jaipur at level two. So, do you think level two is okay or should I go for level three? No, no, I mean, see, this is where the problem is. You have to see where, what are your strengths and where you deemed fit. You apply there. Yeah, I this think many we, times, you know, people ask me how much budgeted project I will, I should write, how much we'll get. I said, it doesn't depend on that. It depends on the, why, what idea you're trying to explore. Uh, in the and, bigger program, As I, I think, mentioned earlier, also, we need to be realistic with our objectives vis-a-vis -vis budget. Yeah, yes, madam. Anyway, so, take, applying at the level two. Fair enough. Okay, now take her, uh, you take her advice, Kotari, uh, uh, sir. Now we have with us... Dr. Murthy, Dr. Murthy. Yes, yes. SL Kothari rang me one day that Eva Upadhyay from her department yes, sir. had published a Lancet with 200 other scientists together. Yes. It was not in my knowledge. That day, with the advice of Silva Murthy, I started a new mission that is a Trigger Rider. Yes. Trigger Rider means who motivates others, shows the path to others, and after that, two, three other persons have also published a Lancet. Dr. Sanghi, can you tell you a minute what is your trigger rider? Yes. The person who opens up a new avenue, say like here is a person, first time published a paper from Amity group 
in Lancet, which has an impact factor of 60. So this is, a, this is a trigger rider. The person will open up and guide many other people to achieve the similar, similar acclaim and laurels. So that is a trigger rider. And we, uh, so he is one of them. For example, uh, Dr. Nidhi Chauhan, she got, first time she worked with the Nobel laureate for, for five months. Amiti sent her on leave and uh, on deputation to go and work with the Nobel laureate in Australia. So she is a trigger rider. First time a faculty going and working with the Nobel laureate for five months. Similarly, ICMR National Award, uh, Shakuntala Amitian Prize, first time. So we recognize such talents who are the trigger riders. And uh, then we also have people who promote subsequently to promote this, like Ajit Verma is promoting a large number of uh, doctoral students going out to other countries. So we have uh, founder has established mechanism to recognize, appreciate, laud our faculties who are achievers. We have about 20 trigger riders already in all my universities and we will celebrate in a online uh, seminar, welcome them, honor them, because Tinku Basu was the member of this Royal Society of Chemistry. Right. The first uh, in our campus. Within a few weeks, Sunita Ratal also got the membership. Then Mona Lisa, yesterday, <laughs> you might have received the news, Mona Lisa Mukherjee. Uh, and she also, she also got Yes. Oh, great, great. So this is Trigger Rider. All these years, <laughs> yes. nobody my kind uh, chemistry wizards, nobody became, but when uh, in Kuba Soup, uh, when now dozens of people are eligible for them, this is Trigger Rider. <laughs> they, they, these are the fellows of the Royal Society of Chemistry, and there is also a fellow of Royal Society of Biology. So Amiti has a large number of fellows. We have Dr. Rajinder Prasad. He is fellow of all the three academies. INSA, National Academy of Science, Indian Academy of Science. So such great jewels are there. Dr. Rajendra Prasad has built a beautiful, under the, uh, the patronage of Amity University Haryana Chancellor, Dr. Asim Chauhan, a big central instrumentation facility with investment of about 10 crores have been established in Amity University Haryana. And he has also built a large school of motivated scientists there in Amity University Haryana. Over to you, Dr. Rajendra Prasad. For your comments. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Murthy. Founder, sir, thank you very much for giving this chance uh, to formally listen to Minakshi. And Minakshi, really, you always are very good teacher. And I was really wondering, I'm low time pay when Varmaji, myself, were starting. We never had such a teacher who could guide us how to write projects. And you, I, mean, I think the young people are so lucky today to listen to you. And they, when you spoke, you spoke on behalf of all of us, actually. We keep telling similar things, but not in a, such a structured way. And you did a wonderful job. And uh, I'm sure uh, people will benefit uh, when you have shown the way from beginning, how to write, how to conceive idea, and also how to handle the rejection. Because that is very important. Rejection, if you get, doesn't mean you start growing beard and that's to nothing. It is, it is better to continue and keep going into more and more projects, good ideas and things like that. And, you, uh, and they should also realize that success is not always 100%. So you have to, and Manakshi, I'm really very impressed. And uh, I need not say, but you have been very popular DBT contact person, not only for Amity, for most of us. Yes, and sir, you're that's on, true. You're only a call away. <laughs> And it's so nice. And we, I mean, we know a little bit more about you. So we feel very fortunate, but you are good to all of us in, in general. There were two, three questions in the question bank I could see. I would not uh, ask you general specific questions, but one question was that, is there any eligibility? Somebody asking young, young person. Yes, sir, I of see, writing. I can see. Right, so. Uh, eligibility I mean, for uh, applying for a project. Right, I, I, I think uh, not. Sir, in case of, yes, I will say on case, those who are super innovative, they can be co-PIs and they, they can keep the younger uh, person as a PI. That's, that's the all. Otherwise, we accept no. project from anybody. Exactly. I was, no, I was talking in terms of only young persons. 
But no, I mean, uh, for uh, awards, like there are some, uh, if it's a young researcher's grant, for example, IYBA is there, there it's an age limit of 35. Or if you want yeah. to apply for a bioscience award, there's an age limit of 45. Or it is a, a Tata Innovation Fellowship where the age limit is 55. And Ramlinga Fellows, uh, they know it, it is 45 years. So there, they are agents, but as far as writing a project proposal and submitting uh, till 60, and there's no age limit. And now, in fact, yeah. in Bayrak also, we have given projects to senior people also. See, I'm getting, so I, I, I'm also getting, so I have no complaint. And, sir? <laughs> I'm also getting at the moment, so I have no complaint on that. Sir, sir, <laughs> sir self-explanatory, sir. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank so, you. Yeah, then we... One, one one small point. Yeah. Sure, many time, many times these young colleagues keep asking, what are the comments of rejection? True, because sir. that if you can start getting yes, like sir. invest, huh, then people can improve yes, in the next sir. cycle. So what happens many times, you know, see, we are given too many projects and one prof uh, officer, believe me, sir, one officer is handling too many things. So it becomes really difficult to, you know, address uh, each and every proposal. That is why at times we are not able to give the comments, but if somebody asks specifically, we do, uh, we do give. They may sound to be like a generalistic kind of, uh, 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 you know, these uh, comments, but we do give. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Barbaji, I can see Geeta ji. Namaste. <laughs> Namaskar, ma Namaskar ma'am. Namaskar. Now, I, will, thank you, thank I, you. I want to present uh, Meenakshi ji, another important yes. director of Amit yes, Institute sir. of Biotechnology, who has built a great institution with 2,000 students, 120 faculties, more than 50 research projects, funded projects and uh, 167 uh, PhD scholars. Now that is Dr. Chandradeep Tendon. Yes. Uh, Dr. Tendon, would you, would you like to make any comment uh, or any questions? You have any clarification you want to ask? Okay, thank you. I'm audible, sir. Yes. yes. Uh, for, at the outset, uh, I would say Dr. Munshi, an excellent presentation. Because there may, be, there may be various websites which can tell us how to write proposals. But coming from your experience makes a difference. Huge difference because they say an ounce of experience is worth tons of theory. So an experience always counts. So having said that, uh, Dr. Munshi, I have just two small questions. One has already been asked by Dr. Prasad regarding the if project is rejected, if you can tell us the comments. But the second question is uh, uh, is very pertinent. You know, sometimes what happens? Uh, maybe there is a budget cut when a scientist writes a proposal. Task force member reviewers always go for a budget cut. But now keeping that in mind, objectives remain same. So, you know, sometimes it becomes a challenge to uh, realize those objectives, to meet those objectives within the lesser budget. So what is your take on that? I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I would like to address. See, first of all, uh, I, mean, uh, I can tell you, if you really feel uh, your budget was not inflated, you could come back, you reject, you say, I will not accept the project on this budget you have sent me, you have uh, recommended. Either you give me the exact budget, what I have asked for, otherwise, but what is happening, uh, you all know it. Most of the projects are inflated and uh, they uh, they do uh, know that. The PI knows that because DBT is going to cut, it's a general, uh, you know, the mindset, PI knows very well that uh, there is going to be a 5%, 10% cut. So let me propose a budget accordingly. Because see what, uh, as I mentioned earlier, so who is uh, reviewing your project? It is a scientist like you. They know it. Uh, many times, you know, people say, oh, my uh, my PCR machine is going to cost 6 lakhs or 8 lakhs or whatever. The, the expert knows, oh, he, they, they themselves say it's go, not go, going to cost 3 to 4 lakhs. So reduce the budget here. So that's how the budget gets cut. Many times, you know, I'll tell you my own experience in my own task force, one of the uh, young uh, of uh, PI, tha, so he had mentioned uh, uh, some uh, work he will do, the work plan, but his consumer grant, he had asked for two lakhs. The committee deliberate, they said he cannot do it in two lakhs per year. They increase it to five lakhs. Mm -hmm. And many times, uh, like now the, there is a virtual meeting earlier, we used to call all the PIs for the presentation to DBT. And the committee felt, what will this guy do in 20,000 rupees as a travel grant? We increased to 50,000. So these things are there, but you know, you know the mindset of a PI in India, especially, they give us an inflated budget. And who, re who reviews them? People like you. 
<laughs> that I can you tell know, you. Some of you, you know, uh, many of us are in various review committees, you task know board, so. chairman yep. or <laughs> member. Yes. So these are all we have experience. So good point, Dr. Tendon. Anything else? Dr. Sharma has so much of experience of dealing with these projects <laughs> in di of different kind. But no. Dr. Binakshi, I had the experience of getting this, that there was a cut of the budget. But then I put up this request for enhancement, and then the increase when the if it is even, even in case of, I can share. Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. Nutan has now start, uh, talked about it. Mm -hmm. Even uh, when uh, you know in the midterm, what happens? We mm -hmm. give you uh, suppose ten lakhs for an equipment, and mm -hmm. then there is a fluctuation in the currency, and ultimately you landed up paying twelve lakhs. And then the PAPI writes to us. We uh, submit the documents. We do give the money that. We do yeah. that. Yeah, thank you. These thank are the you general problems Dr. of the person. Yes. So sir. how will he manage? And many times it has also happened. Uh, the PI got a project, and he outrightly said he cannot do. If you want to give me this project, give me this equipment. Otherwise, I cannot do it. So we have gone back to our finance, gone back to our committees. That has happened. Right. But by and large, you all know. Yes, there's inflated budget. Now, Dr. Now, yes. one and a half minute to Professor Ragini Singh. Yes, yes, I was about to invite her. <laughs> Ragini Singh, you have brought so many Ramalinga Swami, Ramanujam fellows, and yes, faculty, and in the HR, strategic HR, Powder Carl said, you know, headhunter, <laughs> in a very uh, fond way, headhunter. But actually, she is the one who searches talents, bring these talents both at senior levels, strategic position, and also Ramalinga Swami fellow, she was deputed to US, Chicago, by Honorable Founder President to go there. And she has motivated many people to come to Amity University through these fellowship scheme. And she has interacted with Dr. Meenakshi Munshi. Over to you, Ragini. Uh, so, thank, you, Ragini. thank you, thank you. The Chancellor uh, nowadays, the Chancellor has interested her with a very important uh, job to bring top scientists from Mohali University. Right. With, uh, with great citation, H factor, I 10 factor, uh, funded projects, research publications. So now Chancellor is very clear that he will have only people, those are among the best in the country. And she has in the uh, short time brought a large number of scientists from India and abroad. Ragni, am I right? You, you go ahead now. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. And good afternoon to all the eminent panelists and the members. It's been a pleasure listening to you, Dr. Minakshi, as always. Uh, you know, I've had definitely, as Dr. Silvamurthy was saying, I've had the uh, pleasure of, you know, traveling with you and also with, you know, attending the SIRAI uh, conference with you. And I've seen you live, you know, speaking to the speaking to the fellows there. One thing that has always struck me is you know, your simplicity with which you tackle the problems, the simplicity at which you approach these fellows and the comfort that they feel in going back to you again and again, <laughs> which, which I think is absolutely, absolutely you know, amazing coming from a, you know, a government institution, but still you are so, so approachable and I, and I second Dr. Tandon in that. So you know, I think we must thank you for that. And uh, coming to the Amity platform, you know, we have seen how you've been so, so supportive for everybody who was, who came back to you. Thank you. So Manoj, can start the question answer, right? Thank you. Yes, Professor. sir. Because because there are a few people, they are saying, why you are not answering our questions? So they're feeling very bad. <laughs> so they, they will be now. All questions. So I must... So I must formally thank you, Dr. Munshi, for, for you, you know, so being much. a support thank you so much. and for always being available to all the fellows. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, I, I thank realized you. I wanted to do research and but because of uh, some other issues, I could not. I felt, let me be an enabler at least. Exactly. I couldn't do research myself. Responsibility. Now, uh, Dr. Manoj, are you going to take these questions? Yes, sir. I will take yeah, these questions. Let's go to the question there. They feel bad. They have said yeah, yeah. you are not answering our questions. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much, ma'am, for this wonderful talk and my association with you from last six years. I remember the first time I called you from Singapore when I was applying for Ramalinga Swami Fellowship. And you said, don't worry, you submit it by email. I will print out and uh, submit it to the committee member. So thank you very much. And after that, we have many discussion in conclaves. And you always uh, take care of all the fellows, all the scientists, like a mother. Like whenever I ask you, ma'am, I want to change my host institution. You said, okay, I will call you 
and you call me in the night around 10 o'clock and solve that problem immediately so thank you very much for being helpful to all the fellows and still when there is ucsc problem you said okay i will call you and we got your call so i never have seen uh, you know such a personality at such a high level that will call you itself so i am very thankful and very grateful thank for you. having you dr manoj is a very distinguished ramaliga swami fellow he got the icmr award shakuntala yes, meet he told he just told me last year congratulations dr uh, uh, go ahead thank Manu. you thank you so yeah now ma'am the one question is that always so that traveling of first, first you mention the name of the person who has yeah. asked the question and then uh, give the question right okay so the the first question is already asked by uh, 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 dr rajendra prasad that uh, most of the people have this question that why we don't get comment on the rejected proposal so that we can improve on it and further can submit uh, so that it can be you know uh, yeah so i think i did answer that so let's go to the question which ha which has not been answered okay so the other question is that uh, from the ramalinga swami fellows itself like when we have this fellowship can we apply for another grant yes or we you can wait? yes 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 a big yes please do apply in fact where in the first year itself you should apply okay so then ma'am there is a question that uh, why uh, is there any possibility to put a budget for the publication as now most of the publications as of now yes are... we don't have such a uh, option uh, available with us for the publication yeah that's a concern i read the question also i'm really sorry as of now we don't have but you know government is thinking of an open access policy that part is doing but about this uh, publication cost as of now no okay and then ma'am another question is that most of the people have asked this question what should be the ideal budget in multidisciplinary projects again or what should be the share in the multidisciplinary no, no, no. projects see again let me answer your question there are two things one is what is your objective what are the questions you are trying to <laughs> address and what you need for that see i i mentioned during my talk i said there are, i we are two collaborators one is doing the genoming genome part one is just doing small you know the survey part or he has to so my budget will be small and the my other partners budget will be more larger it depends on what kind of questions we are addressing be real i again say you got to be realistic with your budgets you know suppose you are doing sequencing or you are doing any uh, you know how much it would cost now it, uh, everything is available so you need to be realistic with your budget i wouldn't say any x amount you uh, submit the budget no that's not the answer answer is depending on the kind of questions you are trying to address your budget would be proportionate whether it is uh, your uh, contingency grant contingency is not much main is your non recurring grant and your recurring grant and the uh, and the number of uh, people you need to to work on it so in this case that uh, a young pi especially can take help of the senior pis who knows very well how to do uh, yeah, budgeting yeah, on the see uh, what is the difference between a fresh phd and a person who has done 30 years back my my phd boss used to tell me the only difference between you and me is that uh, the 30 years of experience that's it so please do take help of your seniors i'm sure they are always there for us if uh, i mean you approach once you may, he or she may be busy but it depends on your perseverance too how many times you go to your senior at times he may be busy that's genuinely but then he also sees your interest how much you are pursuing it please do uh, do approach your seniors i'm sure they are always there to help us right there is a question by dr vinod prasanna gurasekaran mm -hmm. he, he wants to know i have experience in cancer biology in particular protein a particular protein should i switch my focus on regenerative medicine using the same protein for other diseases will that be accepted if i submit proposal in, uh, in see uh, i would i would uh, say that if you have lead in a particular area you should focus on that very area also but if there are some new exciting areas you feel no it has a also potential do apply because you need to diversify that is equally important right uh, the other question is from realm uh, he is, he wants to know if the pi is not having expertise 
in the domain of that project but the copi is having expertise Uh, so normally, but then a... then the committee would say, let the copi be the pi. Huh. <laughs> That's the question. See, it is the scientists like because we we need to have a confidence that the you can deliver at the end of three years. That is what is important. We are also joined by our Pooja Chauhan ji. Uh, welcome, Namaskar. welcome, and good morning, and very good welcome. Good morning. Pooja ji, just a minute, uh, please congratulate Atul ji and Pooja ji for their very very anniversary. They oh, congratulations! Congratulations! Many, many more to come. Many, many more to come. Congratulations, sir! Congratulations, sir! Thank you, sir! Thank you! Congratulations, ma'am! Congratulations, congratulations, Chancellor, sir, Pooja, ma'am, to both of you. Congratulations, sir and ma'am, here. Congratulations, Pooja ji, sir and ma'am. I think. Uh, thank you so much, and uh, long uh, happy life. <laughs> thank you so much, and uh, founder. Thank you so much for calling. both of us and especially puja ji online and i think for us uh, uh, as a best anniversary gift could be this lecture today by <laughs> dr minal oh, i am overwhelmed i am overwhelmed thank you so much thank you so much oh, what a what a very enlightening beginning to the day thank you so much dr minal thank you so much dr chauhan thank you so much puja ji one word from you puja really appreciate and thank you so much founder and as you are always you know you try and involve everyone in the amity family and minakshi ji you're also i heard a lot of your uh, deliberations and topics and coming from a woman i am so proud so inspired by how well you uh, you did all the questions and to all our amity um, uh, people here thank you so much for your good wishes thank you so much and founder again my my gratefulness to you thank you so much thank you so much Thank you, for thank you for prayers congratulations best wishes for a long happy peaceful prosperous wedded life from all members of amity family to both dr atul chauhan ji and dr uh, mrs asim chauhan uh, mrs pooja chauhan ji thank you so much you. so i think uh, continue with the question answer because we should not uh, there must be few more questions sure, sir continue. right actually a few minutes more please <laughs> please uh, i'm i'm fine i'm happy i'm uh, i mean whatever best i can do to help others that is what i would love to right always there there is a question from uh, dr uh, sudanshu tripathi and he wants to know is multidisciplinary research area uh, related to instrumental design <clears throat> in the field of agriculture sector so this is regarding instrumental design in the agriculture sector such things will fit into dbt scheme or that will go to you could uh, can go to birac it will right. most aptly uh, go to birac right the other question is from dr Shush sushma chauhan and uh, she wants to know keeping in mind i, I have uh, i have one doubt regarding the methodology part as you suggest in the talk this part should not be uh, sh uh, should not be detailed methodology keeping this in mind i had prepared and submitted a project to dbt and it was presented on bio resources and secondary agriculture however just because i could not detail uh, uh, cloning part of methodology the project was not funded and moreover i got advice from one of the advisor from dbt that i can resubmit what is your advice No, no. I mean, you can always resubmit if there were certain flaws in the project and on the basis of which it got rejected. See, there is always. I tell to everybody. See, if one project is rejected, world is not going to end. That's okay. Rejection is a part of life. Let's accept it. Move to the next level. I tell this to these uh, Ramlinga fellows also. You know, many times uh, they will tell me, uh, "This is my uh, second chance. This is my third chance." doesn't see it is everything is very relative what happens for example i'll tell you uh, in that uh, batch whenever this per person has submitted a project maybe they found they got better uh, uh, proposals than this one and then this needed some tweaking then they now they said oh, okay this is uh, rejected you can resubmit it so it all depends it all depends on you know relative uh, number of projects also and then some the budget also see we have all the divisions have a different budget allocations and how much budget is allocated to my kitty it depends on that also so there are, it's not only single factor which depends on the which is uh, responsible for the rejection of a project at times if there uh, i will tell you recently uh, we had a 
meeting i have only very 15 slots for that um, for that particular program i mean even they were good people now what happens you are good but you need to be the best Yes. so that's how there is a difference between this good and the very good and the very the best so you select the best because you have a restriction on the numbers correct you should not feel that you know just because your one project was rejected that oh you are not fit for it you are not you don't have a gray matter you have a gray matter you have reached till here come on i mean you need to mature yourself that's not end of if yahani mila somewhere else some other agency is there but definitely you will get it exactly so please and, uh, be yeah, optimistic right about your own right. self the only thing which goes with you is your own confidence Absolutely. on the subject and on your own self very that's very very important well said meenakshi ji and uh, there is another question from uh, dr piyush parke uh, how should we proceed to identify potential collaborators for a multidisciplinary research see uh, you first of all you have a question you are asking a particular questions then you see around who are the people working in that area who can be complementary to your uh, idea you i mean these days it's not difficult you have a internet you need to come up that's what i said you need to come up out of your comfort zone and explore and things will fall in place please make a first step the problem with us is we don't take the uh, first step we feel we are the reason is we are scared of failures if it doesn't happen what will happen so what doesn't happen doesn't happen something <clears throat> else will happen but please see whatever is in, in your hand you do that until unless you make your effort how will you uh, then uh, uh, radhan cribbing it doesn't make a sense you need to make your effort reach out to people suppose from in 10 people you have reached out maybe two only responded that's okay that is your success So okay. please start exploring from the day one. Thank you, Dr. Menakshi Ji. And the next question is by Dr. Sudanshu Tripathi: Whether PA is encouraged to submit the same project proposal to multiple agencies? No, 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 time? no. It gets turned down. Nowadays, we if I have a project, I will uh, Google I'll, uh, and I'll come to know that he has already submitted it. So we don't recommend that. It shouldn't be. It should be novel. That's how it, there has to be novelty. If you have already submitted to ten different agencies. you can modify it see the what happens your basic broader goal of your research uh, doesn't change your uh, what you are working but suppose i am uh, looking at one pathway you you try to tackle a problem from multiple angles so you can apply for one project from dbt one from this but they are all diverse but yet they converge that you can do that's not, that's not a problem right thank you dr apiksha batnagar would like to know are there exclusive funding agencies for multidisciplinary projects not really not really not really no. right you need to apply it depends dr. on what you want dr puriti mathu she heads up our bioinformatics in navit university if i have completed one project and wish to extend that work do i recommend do you recommend that the new project sh- proposal should be submitted to a different funding agency no 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 you can submit to the same funding agency not at all i let me share uh, nutan is here nutan has been doing one project for 10 years more than 15 years she has uh, dealt with the project where she came up finally with a product and it went to the market we, we you can take the leads to the next level to the next level definitely Correct. you can You Dr. don't need to go to different agencies. Dr. Deepati Pal would like to know what should be returned in deliverables under that column. Deliverables and what should deliverables not... is what you expect. You have uh, raised certain questions. You are trying to answer them. What is your probable answer? That will be your deliverable. Absolutely. And Dr. Uh, Rama Ranjan Batacharji would like to know. that now in this world is it possible that the whole process of submitting a research proposal and verifying etc can be changed and made more interactive so that for the faculty it can be made much easier like if only one an idea abstract is submitted based on which after screening the selected project pis can give talk either online or offline based on which the final grant sank- can be sanctioned so the, now since the online scheme the process is now very easy uh, can it be done a greater opportunity to uh, given to pis to express their ideas online offline so this uh, dr ramaranjan patacharji wants to know sorry dr murthy uh, yeah, i will i will on a call what they want to know is now since online transactions are much easier 
Uh -huh. And the other earlier, the hard copies have to go. Now we are, we are not asking for any hard copy now, Dr. Murthy. Ah, right. Everything is and online. Also, they can, that's what I said in our that flow chart of activities where you submit a project and you can track it, whether it is at tech level, whether it is at stag level, whether it is in finance. You can track your project. Right. Dr. Sh uh, Sushma Chauhan uh, would like to know, I got the advice from DBT coordinator that I have to mention in the remark that this project was in final round of selection and this was of not of the detail a lot of details on cloning part it was advised to provide the details methodology of the uh, cloning of that, that part would be better because you know that gives a committee feel that well this is not coming first time and they have done their due diligence and it is dbt who has recommended is to submit uh, it further i mean uh, resubmit it look in, in, into those uh, issues which were addressed, which were pointed out by the earlier committee. Well, a question from Dr. Manish Divedi. How the availability of research resources in the host institute may affect the acceptability of the research proposal? Yes, I'll tell you. So what happens, see, uh, any agency, uh, you whenever you have to do a research project, you need certain set of equipments. And you cannot expect that the funding agency will give you all the equipments. Yes, the major, um, some of the equipments can be given to you, but you cannot expect uh, a funding agency to set up your lab. So that is why it is very important uh, for us to know what are the existing facilities. Yes, we can chip in uh, in, in the form of non recurring grant, but not uh, there to set up your lab. If uh, a funding agency has to set up each and every lab, imagine what will happen. That is why we ask for the existing facility. This is very important. Very important. Dr. Silomuti ji, I'll yes. just, uh, there is a question, uh, phone call is coming. Yeah. So she has answered, maybe once more she can tell that no. there is uh, whether there is fund available for the publication cost meeting the public. No, 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 not as of now. No. Uh, there, there are few calls coming. I can there understand. Are... Yeah, it involves a huge amount of money yeah. uh, for the publication, yeah. especially you the. Can, you cannot publish in a good journal without having. Yeah, yeah I, I am aware about this, yeah. but as of so, now, no. Okay. Something could be done. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, let's 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 put uh, uh, come, uh, to the higher ups. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. It has to be a policy level decision. Yes, certainly. certainly. Uh, Dr. Rajshri Das, again, a, a scientist from Amit Institute of Biotechnology, wants to know uh, whether interest earned can be used by the PI under consumable head or no, has no, to be. Not at all. I point. mentioned earlier, well, earlier we used to reappropriate, and now the government is all the more strict. You have to submit it to the bar, of course, not, uh, not to DBT. There's a central portal where you need to submit. Once you submit the interest earned, you will generate a receipt and that you have to submit along with the UCSC for a subsequent release. Thank you. Dr. Smriti Sharma wants to know whether while applying the, for the project, is the references play a role? I mean, I mean see, using good it references. To it. I would say it is not that exclusively references play a role. When you look at... Uh, it is a package. Your, your project proposal has to be looked into in total, not in segregated manner. That is why you need to give air to detailing for every component, which, which is a part of the project. Dr. Silva Murthy. Yes, sir. Before next question, I have disturbed Dr. Seem Chauhan in a meeting. I right, told sir. him without two words from you, I will not <laughs> complete. So he has kindly agreed to just speak few words. Uh, Dr. Seem Chauhan, who is our chancellor, and who is a great innovator. So please, uh, Asim ji, please go ahead. May, uh, may uh, I invite uh, Dr. Asim yeah. Chauhan ji, he is the yeah. original president of our foundation and also the chancellor of a few of our Amiti in, uh, universities in our Amiti group. Again, a young dynamic leader uh, who has created a great facility in Amiti University, Haryana, promoting research. Over to you, Dr. Asim ji. Yeah, Dr. Manakshi, uh... Very good day to you. And I cannot tell you the great value, the great inspiration that we draw from you. I've been you, listening sir. in to your lecture uh, throughout, although there was one or two other engagements happening, but I could hear most of what you were saying. And the number of questions that have come for you shows that uh, the great resource that you, know, you have been and the kind of guidance you're giving to our people, you can see that within the Amity group, the passion there is for research and solving problems of society through good R&D, uh, led by our founder president himself. You can see that 
founder being present and guiding and giving so many innovative ideas to our scientists. And we need your ongoing support, your guidance and your blessings, Dr. Minakshi. And Thank you, we are so proud to have a dynamic person like you in the DBT that our people can reach out to. Everyone has been saying how open you are. I think this is the way that our nation will go forward. And science and technology and R&D is clearly an answer of taking our nation forward. So you're doing a wonderful national service and we are also grateful to you. Thank you so much, Dr. Minakshi. Thank you so much. Asim ji, just one question to Atul Chauhan ji, Aapko and Amol ji. This lecture can be put on digital standards, digital stands, boxes in many of our uh, areas, in all cam campuses, so that every scientist, whenever she he or she finds time, stand, stand before the digital stand and reads it once I want, all these deliberations go in mind, body, and soul of each scientist. I will put one standard at AKC House because yeah. you listen so many ideas, but it should go deep because it is so important. I am now getting to my people more than 1,000 funding agencies all over the world so that we don't always encroach to DBT, DST, ICMR, ICR, ISRO, and uh, DAE. So as she also very rightly told, also go to the foreign funding agencies. MBT has now so much reputation. People respect us all over the world. So Asim ji, uh, if you are hearing. Yes. No, I think it's a good idea. We can work out and create digital kiosks so that we can put into areas where our scientists can access the most important lectures and data. We yeah. will we will immediately work on this. And these, these should run round the day. The right, absolutely. Round the yes. day so that the whole deliberation can be read within 10 minutes there. Yeah, yes, absolutely. We will we will arrange for this to happen. Amol, you please follow it. Amol Chauhan is my executive director, strategic operations, a Harvard graduate. And whatever I tell him, he gets it implemented. Silam Murthy ji, please get it implemented. Yes, sir. We, we will we will do that. And this will be available like a bulletin board. Wherever <laughs> a person wants to refer to such kind of lectures, to reappraise, if he has any doubts or clarification, they can revisit this website. And we, we will organize that, sir. Right. There is a question by Dr. Sankita Pandey, who is looking after our, uh, in the Amity Institute of Applied Science. She is a chemistry specialist with us. And she wants to know how to identify private companies, organizations, who can fund as a part of their CSR research initiatives uh, for Amity. You have to go to the internet look for it. For example, I can tell you uh, Bill and Gl uh, Melinda Gates Foundation. Then there's a PATH Foundation. There's USAID. There, uh, there are many agencies like this who are... You need to do some exercise. See, nothing comes on the platter. You have to work for it. Yeah. Please uh, explore explore the internet. Uh, spend some time on this and I'm sure you will get a lot of information. Yes. And uh, Dr. Shruti Mathur wants to know, are there any special requirements if biological materials are used in the project? You need to have ethical clearances from your institutions for using the biological materials. Right. And Dr. Swati Gupta wants to know, is there any possibility of preliminary scrutiny of a proposal by program officer beforehand? It, it goes for main technical evaluation. So oh, that is our Indian, uh, that is what I said, that's called IAC internal screening committee. I understand what the question is, you know, uh, you submit it to a program officer, he, he or she will say, yes, it is okay. That doesn't happen. There's a process we have to follow. We are bound by the rules and regulations of the... Right. Dr. Pooja Chauhan, Pooja Vijay Raghavan would like to know, what is most, more, uh, most acceptable to funding agency? Is it asking for an equipment or putting fund allocation for outsourcing the budget for analytical procedures. No, no, you can see if you feel a uh, committee does feel that you can outsource if it costs less money rather than, you know, supporting a big equipment and committee knows that you can outsource. Nowadays, so many outsourcing agencies are available. It is best where you can save money and uh, you uh, you put that component in the contingency and you write that you want to outsource this kind of these many, uh, for example, nowadays sequencing. It's done by outsourcing. Yeah, thank you. Dr. Biswa, uh, Biswajit Saha. He is also a Humboldt fellow. 
and he wants to know not these trending schemes which used to be advertised earlier now last 3 years we don't we it don't... has been stopped see what happened under this scheme uh, nearly for 8 9 i think nearly for a decade we gave projects on that so this created an enough infrastructure in the northeast under the scheme of late this has been uh, stopped you know one st- scheme that stopped another emerges so this is a constant we need to upgrade ourselves also looking at the uh, priorities because with time priorities change last year who would have thought that we'll be meeting uh, virtually when uh, last time i came to met i met uh, i met each one of you uh, personally physically but this time we are meeting virtually so we have to adapt to the changing systems and so one scheme gets obsolete the new one comes right that's a part of life that's how we grow absolutely and in fact uh, amiti also has got uh, 45 projects proposal we submitted about 10 were sanctioned and do this see so if the uh, dr deepshika katari wants to know if the idea is very new and does not have much literature to support uh, can it be funded by the uh, agencies see some proof of concept has to be there if it's a really a big idea and you really need to chase it you can go to D- to birec for that's called a biotechnology ignition grant you can apply there they give you 18 months uh, to uh, to prove the proof of concept if there is a budget for that you have to again see we live in a competitive world we need to compete and get the things and get the part of my pie from that big pie Right, Dr. Sandeepan Chakravarti wants to know: Is there any preference for funding by DBT for basic or translational research? No, no, no. We support both. We support. We have a we have a strong task force on basic biology and the uh, translation component equally. I think you have answered most of the questions, and uh, almost. I don't want to disappoint anybody. He or she should feel <laughs> I would love to answer all the questions. Right, right. I mean, actually, I like to add here about oh. outsourcing. that i met in was is very young still we have managed to get fist program i got fist program about so that uh, speaks about your uh, your uh, performance past performance <laughs> that's right and the uh, fist program and the most important our we got a confocal microscope and we get at least 20 uh, letters every week to help us and we are performing and doing the job in our met in was thing The yes. confocal microscope have been used by all over India. Confocal microscope we use all over India very heavily. Yes, you can. Problems. In fact, if you have these big facilities, you can uh, generate revenue also. You can uh, yes. uh, service charges uh, on the basis of that. That will help That's you right. in these equipment That's as right. well as uh, you know generate That's revenue. Right. So these kind of models right. we have to uh, devise. Because these microscopes or these facilities are very expensive and also maintain them. Yes, so that's what I'm saying, sir. <laughs> we need to do this. We are giving service, and we also generate some revenue to it. Yeah. yeah. Thank, thank, you, thank you so much. And one more just question from a PhD scholar: uh, Is there? Uh, it's by Akela, Akela Wap, and she wants to know: Is there a funding scheme available for PhD candidates to apply? PhD scholars who are doing PhD. No, there is no. As of now, there is no funding. But as a PhD, if you want to do PhD, you can write a DBT BET examination. That is biotechnology exam. Uh, you can qualify and uh, you can get a fellowship for PhD. Not a research grant per se for a PhD student. You get a research. Uh, you get a uh, fellowship and some contingency grant. Thank you so much and. Uh, we will uh... ma'am sir there is another important question from right. professor simran tandon right. why net clearance is essential for jrf if dbt is already giving fund for the fellowship no 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 uh, what happens in that see uh, if uh, what happens in any dbt project if you have qualified any national level examination you are eligible to get the fellowship now there are two categories if you are non net you will get a fellowship which is very less some 12000 rupees or something like that but if you are a net qualified or a, for that matter dbt exam any national level csir qualified uh, uh, candidate you will get uh, 31000 in hra so that makes a difference if you work in a project mode without any uh, national level qualified exam you get very less fellowship so choice is yours which one you want okay ma'am ma'am then another important question from sudanthu tripathi is that when project get completed hmm. and suppose it is commercialization stage 
is there any foundation by the funding agency to give share of the royalties see dbt does not take any money you can plow back into but dbt needs to be a part of the technology and the patent because it is dbt who has uh, supported that project dbt doesn't ask for the money in fact dbt will help you also in uh, filing a patent you need to involve dbt uh, in the uh, patent process like dbt has to be a partner money is all yours there is one question from dr dhru kumar he wants to know the external funding agencies like nih they give a chance for the pi to revise the proposal and resubmit the proposal but indian agents funding agencies don't give this opportunity is it no true? no no you can always see uh, what happens they may not write you it is uh, they will say it has not been recommended but you can always uh, resubmit it improve upon it you think which are the uh, weak points where uh, these are the points where it has been rejected you apply you can resubmit that's not a problem but don't submit the same pro proposal again which got rejected so obviously it will not uh, get uh, and you can uh, cha uh, change the title and change some objectives and you feel which ones you can do it uh, where possibility was where it got rejected you can do it ma'am there is another question from smriti sharma mm -hmm. uh, do the ex expert play major role in deciding the project or the reviewer play major role no no it's a, let's I say mean, one should not get into do it. <laughs> it is a, it is a whole soul it is a reviewer's comments it is the your presentation and it is your discussion everything come uh, together i told you it's a total package it's not one thing yeah. there thank you ma'am there is one from dr abhishek and he wants to know uh which proposal stands better chance of acceptance one with broader approach or one with specific very specific and targeted objective see specific target broader means what if broader means you will not land up uh, if you are uh, asking for too many pro objectives so you will not be able to justify them you will not be able to complete them them so you need to have a focus focus is always uh, important the dr shweta wants to know shweta uh, kulshe kulshestra how much detail should be mentioned in the methodology section if project See, methodology you have to be specific <laughs> yet it should not be skewed right absolutely whatever you want to put your point across that has to be very explicit actually ma'am dr tripathi has asked that they have put uh, less um, detail in the cloning part of the methodology as uh, uh, it is recommended that you should not elongate the methodology yeah, see, and the proposal was for example cloning cloning it's very generic there is no uh, i mean there is a set methodology we all know so why to put two pages for cloning exactly ma'am so his proposal was rejected on the basis that he did not provide enough methodology for the cloning <laughs> No, but so now it, he wanted to know whether no no see it depends what exactly what part what he was trying to address so i cannot you cannot generalize okay. there is no specific you know one dose for everything so it has to be very specific it depends okay. on your objectives it depends on your e questions which you are addressing <clears throat> it depends on that i think you have answered all questions because oh, we have seen so both the yeah. chat box as well as question answer uh, boxes you know, 61 questions and almost another 35 from the chat box so thank you so much dr meenakshi it was really a, a great learning for each and every one of us we also looked uh, learned everyone even senior people we learned a lot from you thank you so much for giving me this opportunity and uh, you, you are you are a pleasant person always radiating happiness so that way with your smile <laughs> you always motivate inspire people this is also a good quality is that you may be a great administrator you may be a great scientist but then the human values which you possess so you know, i have been taught to be a good human being rest falls in place everybody earns bread that's great we need to be good human beings first right now may i now request founder president to make a few concluding remarks the last word is always from uh, our founder president who who lives innovation who lives science who lives research and practices it and gives a lot of impetus he spends more time if if a president of a country and a researcher uh, uh, they are seeking an appointment he will give the appointment to researcher first <laughs> and the kind of importance founder president gives and also all of the chancellors 
they are they have more time for research and innovation that is how what amiti is today have been achieved by this young dynamic chancellors and uh, everyone who is connected from amiti family thank you for this opportunity and we look forward to making india a knowledge superpower and general superpower that is what is the dream of our founder president so we want to listen from him his uh, words of blessings and conclude this session over to you sir dr sunurdi just uh, minakshi ji told that she has been made a good human so i'll be interested some time to listen from her about her parents and grandparents these are the values and sanskars which only parents grandparents and i i agree that she is a good human so sometime we will encroach on your time that you brief about your uh, elders and uh, gross elders sure sir sure sir anything <laughs> uh, dr salamurthy yes sir uh, it was a wonderful webinar we also got the gave the opportunity to all question answers and this is again the patience patience uh, from minakshi ji our chancellor sent me a message Uh, founder president don't overstrain her time her energy and don't overstrain her patience i told to him i know minakshi ji she will not be tired in replying the questions so chancellor tell go ahead and i compliment and appreciate and bless everybody who has listened this uh, i will request to shefali harjinder neha shweta and isha Today evening, today evening, you will get from me the total list of all attendees, with the time period, how many minutes they attended it, and you please draft a complimentary, a comp compliment email from my name to each one of them. Yes, the president is proud of you, but I go on judging each of my scientists. Uh, as I told, we have made a list of more than two thousand. scientific oriented scientists researchers grf srf uh, this list is with us i was in a trouble what should i name this list and yesterday after consultation with rajiv sharma and shilma murthy and others uh, vc das i have named it which has been approved by many mit science technology thunder group so thunder shakes the mind body and soul and i want that the brains of each of my scientists is shaken and uh, this list will be uh, made available to anybody from the mit campus with a protected keyword because this is such a important list it should not go out of camp, uh, campus our mit we have made it with great uh, great care today dr somuti fellow i will tell one secret of my life right sir allow us please many, many times in press conferences or press uh, interviews people ask me Dr. Chauhan, what is your greatest problem? I do not reply. Oh, they say oh, wrongly, wrongly uh, use the word. What is your greatest concern? I do not reply. They say oh, again, do the mistake, sir. What is your greatest challenge? I tell yes. Here I will tell you. My greatest challenge is all my attendees. My greatest challenge in my life is that I believe so much on Indian acumen of research. Uh, uh, creative ideas innovative ideas and when i say it it is just not heard or read it is authentic 28 years i have seen it myself i have seen the indian brains to my scientists i must tell you i have lectured in harvard cambridge oxford yale uh, mit i have lectured all over the world i have seen all research scholars scientists but my indian brain is uncomparable so my challenge is not a concern not a uh, not a problem these are not my vocabulary my challenge is how like can that. i how can i utilize the potential of these people and such lectures of minakshi is a milestone in utilizing it i want to show to the whole world we file maximum patents we file maximum uh, publications and we do maximum commercialization for industrial commercial societal use so this is my life mission and minakshi ji you have contributed greatly today to my life mission thank you so much we will, so we, we need to provide an enabling ecosystem i know these young minds uh, who are coming back 
Right. They need an enabling ecosystem and who provides the best ecosystem than uh, this organization, MIT. And that is what I feel because I have been interacting with these youngsters for the past you know, 12 years. Right. And this is there are small, small issues they have. They right. may be trivial, but they need to be addressed. So that is all I would, uh, this is what I have learned from uh, by talking to these people and Manoj can uh, add to it if. Rajiv Ji, make it this enabling ecosystem. Please work on it and make a paper of that. We should do it. Sure, so sir. I, would, I would say that I will not take much time. Uh, I am so proud, so satisfied because my mission, you know, if anything is from mission of life, there can't be, if somebody gives me $10 billion, I will say, go to hell. You add to my mission. I want that my 10 scientists have done wonderful things. And one day uh, people will come with that. Uh, Rajiv Ji, one word about you. When Rajiv Ji came to me from DST, he was making single runs, sometimes double runs, but now chokke <laughs> mare. Okay, I am astonished. What is in the air of everything? <laughs> and all these five girls I named, they are brilliant girls I've given him. They can move the mountains. Shefal, you have right? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you for our blessing, sir. You are working and they have been given the job now to 500 brilliant postdoc brains from all over the world. Uh, Shefali, chalna kaam us par? Sir, baal achhe, sir, sir. We need your blessings always, sir. Rajiv ji, thank you. working hard, sir. Thank you very much for inviting Minakshi ji. My blessings to all. I'm so glad we will change the world, Dr. Murthy, what our chancellor says. Together we can change the world. Change the world. We will change the world. Thank you. Together we will change the world. So with that positive note, I once again thank Dr. Minakshi Munshi. And you you and I take the opportunity to express our gratitude to you for all your support to Amiti. Whatever we have grown today, your signature is there in Amiti's growth as well. Thank you so, so much, sir. Thank you. you Thank like you. To. All my teachers, all the seniors and all those who have listened to me, I hope I could uh, do some justice to what their uh, aspirations were from this uh, talk. Thank you so much. I wish you many, many more accomplishments in life, happiness Thank you so much, for you, sir. for your family, from Amity family. Our, our best wishes are with you. Thank and you from so all much. members of Amity family, we give our best wishes to you and to your family. And thank I want so to thank much. each and every one of the uh, panelists, as well as all the participants who have very keenly attended as per the philosophy of founder, president and Amity culture. I want to thank you that you people are the future, you people are the present, and you people were the past as well of Amity. So that is why you are the most important in all this deliberation. I hope uh, that we have been able to meet and then give a new paradigm for your project writing. So don't confine yourself only to government funded. Lot of opportunities is there. Now you start exploring from today. And the founder has created ACDS 1, 2, 3. And the system has been established. And we have an innovation incubator available. We have IPR cell. We have technology transfer, DITT. And incubation cell, E-cell. Everything is there in Amity. Now it is for you how to harness this and as founder president mentioned that your, your contribution will be addressing a societal requirement or a need or wealth generation for the country. The $5 trillion economy prime minister has mentioned, you can contribute by generating new technology, product, process, take it to the people through industry. So all this you can do and we will do it together. And that is the final slogan of our chancellor motto of Amity. Together, we will change the world. Thank you very much and best wishes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Rajiv. Vote of thanks, I think, Manoj has to give. Over to Dr. Rajiv Sarmaji. Yeah, yeah, Manoj. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that we should not forget all important backup people also. So, Manoj, okay. please. Yeah. yeah. Good afternoon, respected members and dear colleagues. I have no word to express my sincere thanks and gratitude to Honorable Founder President Sir for his kind blessing, passion, vision towards research, innovation, and nation building by providing right blend of research and innovation driven education to the youth at Amity Universe. A very special thank to our dynamic chancellor, Dr. Atul Chauhanji, Dr. Asim Chauhanji, Dr. Amul 
Chauhan ji for providing us right infrastructure, best resources, endless encouragement, help and support for research, innovation and education. A very special thank to Dr. Minakshi ma'am for his immense support to help the scientific community and especially to the Ramalinga fellows and also delivering the detail and informative talk on a very highly valuable topic that is how to write a successful research proposal. I hope this has helped everyone who is present over here. I want to express that uh, Ramalinga Fellowship with the blend of Amity University as a host institution has changed my overall personality as an independent scientist. I am sure that all the fellow at Amity Universe has the same feeling. Uh, Dr. Minakshi, ma'am, always treat us like uh, a, always uh, she take care of us like a mother and always provide very simpler uh, solution to the hardest problem. So thank you very much, ma'am, once again. Uh, thank to Dr. Silva Murthy, sir, and his, uh, and other panelists for encouraging deliberations, which has given more life to the webinar and valuable inputs for research opportunity. I would like to special thank to Dr. Rajiv Sarma, sir, Dr. Ragni Singh, Dr. Silva Murthy, sir, and core committee <coughs> member for their continuous support and motivation to Ramalinga fellows, Ramanujan fellow, or other fellows at Amity Universe. Thank to all the faculty member and participant for attending this webinar. I would like to thank Kocharji, Safali ji and his team, her team and IT team for smooth operation of the webinar. Once again, I thank one and all present here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Manoj. Please clap to Rajiv Sharma. Rajiv ji, Rajiv ji, one question. Rajiv ji, one question. Sir, sir. Have I understood rightly yesterday that one Ravlingan Swami fellow who has his host institution in a IIT yes, has shifted yesterday. You have given an appointment to us from IIT to us. Yes, yes sir. IIT Kanpur. IIT Kanpur. No, IIT Kharagpur also. IIT Kharagpur. IIT Kharagpur. Because I, I got a mail. I also got a mail. Yeah. इसलिए कह रहा हूँ कि आप लोगों का ये motivation. आप लोगों का ये हम लोग दिन रात मरते हैं health को avoid करते हैं family को avoid करते हैं Wives say, husband, you have done my marriage, so I will do it with MTA. But this gives a motivation. But I at the end, this gives a lot of satisfaction. If we can help a one person right. and make a difference to his or her life, I am a success. Because very, actually, very good. Rambling and Swami Fellows' purpose is to bring brilliant brains, give them a brilliant host institution, Absolutely. and give them, after five years, the right start. At MIT yes. is the only in the country who has all these things. That is why. Uh, yeah, that's what I was saying, sir, that we need to provide them an enabling ecosystem. Correct. It could be a small, small things, but we need to be sensitive to the needs. We will immediately yes. start. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. 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 Thank you.